and welcome to Pepperdine Esports Collegiate Star League versus the University of Victoria. We have a best of three on the latest patch for you today. That'll certainly be interesting to say the least. What, what are your initial thoughts, Cotty? Uh, my thoughts are assassins are absolutely broken and tank supports are hurt. So it's it's a rough time to be an ADC. And, you know, if you get snowballing, you're winning the game. The, the games are just wild. It, it almost feels like a different game with how snowball-y uh, the meta is right now. I mean, I, I think we saw some hot patches come in just mm -hmm. to correct a couple of the small, like, overtunes. I know Kha'Zix was running rampant uh, with Dustblade and a couple others. So it's going to be interesting. It's going to be really interesting to see how this match shapes out. This is our first cast on this new patch. Completely new shop, completely new items. Yeah. yeah everything's been flipped upside down. What are your thoughts, Ramsey? Uh, I mean, I've got the digital version of flashcards pulled up here to try to try to help us navigate because there's so much new stuff. I'm going to keep saying cooldown uh, reduction until the cows come home. Uh, Lord help me, I will probably never remember Ability Haste. And to me, that system just seems so much more complicated because now you have to do math to know how much cooldown you have. Uh, it's, it's, you know, I think Riot has said in theory this system makes it better for the user because you don't have to like over index on cooldown to get items that you want. So I think there's probably a positive impact long term, but certainly in the short term, there's going to be a huge learning curve trying to figure out how much ability haste am I getting? How much is that affecting? You know, is 100 good? Is 200 good? Like, how, you know, what am I what am I aiming for? Yeah, you'll have to get reoriented instead of thinking about like, how do I get 40%? You're going to be you're going to have to start thinking, oh, my power spike or whatever is that like, you know, 50 ability haste or something. So you just got to change your thinking. But definitely and, interesting. You know, different champs are going to want different levels of ability haste. Before it was kind of generic. If you wanted cooldown reduction, you were shooting for 40%, maybe 30 if, you know, items didn't work out. Now with it kind of you know, going until you're do you're maxed on items, different champions are going to be looking for different numbers and, and different levels in order to maximize what they do, and that's just going to throw another wrench into the mix. So, very curious to see how it plays out. Really curious to see what items we see today. You know, if if there's some special sauce that either of these teams have cooked up that they're going to sprinkle on us, or you know, just kind of what what the meta is. I mean, I've been really enjoying playing a lot of Swain. You know, mm. with the new Leandries and just dealing boatloads of damage, you know, both as a support Leandries and... is extremely, extremely strong this patch, uh, especially on, um, I mean, I, I've placed uh, a lot of Zyra slash brand support, and that's just been destroying people lately um, with that Leandries. Speaking of Zyra support, definitely a pick for Victoria. Uh, their support player has put some time in on Zyra. It's one of their most played champions, so... I would not be surprised to see a Zyra building Leandries today. My my follow up question to that, since you've played some Zyra, is: Do you go Leandries into an Oblivion Orb and then Zanyas, or do you finish a Morello before a Zanyas? Mm. Yeah, at this point with the new items, like I I couldn't tell you. I mean, I need to see more high level people playing on this patch, uh, especially because a lot of the more recent tournaments that are still going on were played on last patch. They have not started playing on, on new patch yet. So uh, the only uh, experience I've seen with people using these new items are like high level players in solo queue, which is a lot different than the competitive environment. Yeah. So um, I just know when it comes to the support players I've been watching, uh, Moonstone Renewer sucks. <laughs> Riot does not want healing to be in the game anymore, it seems. Uh, they want it just to be pure damage. They want people to die fast. Uh, poor poor Sona. First she was replaced with Seraphine. Now they're taking away the only thing that makes her good. Uh, I mean, I, it's a, I only... It's a hard life for a Sona main, no I, question. I only slightly kid, but, uh, you know, only slightly. <laughs> yeah. But it'll no, be interesting. I, I, set support main and tank supports are yeah. just... Dumpster right. I mean, if, unless your name is Leona and you're as tanky as all can be, you're just you're just not doing enough. I mean, I've seen a lot of uh, you know OP.GG builds going first item locket, and locket doesn't feel as good as it used to. It's more expensive, and it, the shield doesn't feel as impactful. The stats don't feel as impactful. You know, for a mythic item, and it just it hasn't felt good to be a tank support outside of Leona. Now Leona is really strong. So I would not be surprised to see a Leona today, especially because, again, 
Victoria's support, has put a fair bit of time in on Leona. So, you know, I would imagine Zyra Leona probably picks we're going to see today. Yeah, and just letting the chat know, looks like we're having a little bit of issues with the lobby. So uh, we might need to remake it here in just a little bit to get people uh, into it. But uh, we will be in there shortly. Um, but yeah, I definitely agree with you there, Cotty, about the uh, the tanks just not not feeling good this this meta at least tank supports but i've been playing a lot of uh you know yorick in the top lane my my angsty grave boy um and you know he's been he's been feeling pretty nice with a sunfire cape or, or something along those lines my clash team last night played yorick and holy cow did it take over the game i mean he yeah was well, what what mythic box. did did he build <laughs> Oh boy, let me go back. I've seen Divine Sunder, the and then I know a lot of people like Sunfire. They think that uh, Jungle Yorick might come back with Sunfire Cape. Not oh, like in high elo, but just like as something that can be played. I would love to see a spicy Jungle Yorick. I want to play spicy Jungle Yorick. And then, of course, uh, I played some uh, Gnosis with the new uh, Trinity Force, and that was, that was fun. Yeah. We had so, fun. Last night, my the Clash team that I participate in, we had a Trinity Force Yorick with a GA, mm. and let's see what else did he build? Uh, Titanic and Death Dance. So okay. very tanky, split push, come at me, bro. Yeah, it's a little bit of a different build than I've been seeing on the Yorick one tricks, but you know, if it works, it works, you know? I see a lot of uh, the Yorick one tricks I've been seeing have really been um, using that grasp synergy with how the mythic of um, uh, Sunfire Cape can uh, amplify the health on all the items and therefore make that grasp hit, especially a grasp Q, just destroy people. Yeah, I mean, that, that build that my buddy used last night, he was you know, four-shotting towers with your accuse. I mean, he was like, shovel, meet tower. Boom! Boom, yeah. <laughs> Fighters and bruisers, I'm interested to see. I, I think, uh, other than assassins, they're the ones I think that benefited the most off of this new item Renekton change. Is terrifying. Oh, I haven't, I, mean, I haven't played against him yet, and I'm, I am quaking, quaking in I, my boots. I played an ARAM this morning as Jinx into a Renekton, who just obliterated me. Could not do Oof. anything. Just jumped on my face, stun, you know, Sunfire proc, ultimate, dice threw me again. It's just brutal. Oh, man. I can't imagine. It looks like we were able to get everyone into the lobby this time, so I don't know when we will start up. It's currently glitching and not showing me the chat at all in the lobby, so can't you know, give you updates same. there. <laughs> so uh, whether they're doing pro draft or not, we can't possibly... Uh, possibly no. Yeah, we we do not know. Yeah, Sunfire definitely not a fair item. You're getting a little bit of love in the chat as well. Uh, Am I? Oh, talking about how you're that. an S plus uh, set support. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, set support is no more. At least until we get some buffs uh, on the on the support items. But definitely. But it'll be interesting to see. I think of all of the um, support items, I've seen the most come out of Shrelia's on, like, the Bard. Um, oh, yeah. But also, Imperial Mandate's pretty broken on Nami, at least right now, unless it got hotfix changed. Because I don't know if that was part of the hotfix. It is very strong, though. Because the Imperial Mandate, she can cast her E on an ally, and then it, like, instantly procs the mark and pops the mark when they uh, auto-attack the opponent ah. opposing team because her e counts as a slow but then it counts mm -hmm. as a slow on the auto attack of her ally so it does the mark and procs on the auto attack so, so she need, but she needs to get a bounce for that interaction no her e her e is the uh the speed up auto attack thing on her oh, ally wow so she just needs to cast her e on her ally and it'll like instant or on herself but normally it's her uh uh her ally because they need to hit in order for it to proc oh, not so her so ash nami slow you for days lucian nami everything. as well can proc it really yeah, easily right especially with the double tap yeah yeah, yeah. you know 
unfortunately, I'm not a huge enchanter support player. I need to expand my pool. Gotta stomach it and start playing some Raka. <laughs> Yeah, I no, mean no, that's really healing. all I I have really played. Except I I dabble in the mages like like Swain and Zyra, <laughs> brand a little I, bit, not I, as much. I've really been enjoying Swain's support this patch. I mean, I, the the Swain mains on Reddit have been trying to keep everybody from revealing how broken it is. But that New Leandries, I mean, it's just New Leandries is insane. Like truly, it is yeah. nuts. How are we looking on this start time there, Ramsey? I can't see ideas? the chat, so I can't tell you. They might be doing <laughs> pro draft. They might be just sitting there twiddling their thumbs and waiting for uh, the Lord to come once again. I don't know. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit more about Victoria and their potential team comps. I'm seeing kind of a really good mix, uh, you know, looking at their history. A lot of fighters in the jungle, some Hecarim. Some Jarvan, you know, some go in, jump on you, make your life miserable type of champions. And then a lot, a lot of diversity in the bot lane role. I mean, I'm looking TF bot lane, Ziggs bot lane, Karthus bot lane, mm. along with the Twitch, the Tristana, the Ash, the Seta, you know, so like. Yeah, really so, it, so we should not be surprised if we see an AP bot lane, but we could see I anything. Would be. Yeah, I mean, especially with the new meta, I mean, why not play Ziggs bot lane, right? Uh, like, that it was seems like Riot decided, you know, how many items, like new items, powerful items, should we give mages? How many? All of them? Okay, cool. Because if you look at that mythic page, just, you know, when you're looking at the home in, uh, in the actual client, it's like three items for fighters, three items for tanks, like four items for support, and then like six or seven for mages. And you're just like, okay, well, that's so fun. They're at the shopping mall, like, ooh, I'll take a Landry's and maybe some of this. And <laughs> yeah, I'll do this and this. And it, man, it's pretty, pretty crazy, uh, I have to say. So, I mean, I'm always thinking about, like, I always have Sona in the back of my head because she was my first love when it comes to the game of uh, League of Legends. So I think she's probably going to have to build something from the more mage-centric items than a Moonstone Renewer because it just doesn't provide the the resources that she needs to be useful to her team. So I guess maybe if she could just get that like raw ability power off of something like the... Um, oh, I forget. Uh, I, I could tell you if I was looking at it. But also there's like the Night Harvester too, which just gives pure like ability haste on all your items. Is there a um, world in which she can go Rift Maker and try to like be uh, AP, you know, like the... the Shotgun Sona? Into... Yeah, I mean, Shotgun we saw Sona, Sona Lux be a bot lane. Is there a world where she does that? I mean, uh, I I couldn't tell you. I know that uh, Rift Maker actually um, is flat out broken on Kale right now. Uh, oh, the item's disgusting. The amount of spell vamp you get is unreal. Yeah, uh, the Omni or vamp omni as vamp. well, yeah. Because yeah. uh, all I can say is, like, I, I'm i horrific at champions that are, like, auto-attack focused. I just, I'm awful at kiting and the movement, and I'm just so bad. But I was able to destroy on Kale the other day. So if I am able to destroy on Kale you know that that item just does the work for you. So, uh, so. how's your auto spacing there, Ramsey? <laughs> uh, non-existent. Although, I did realize that I, uh, when the patch updated, it messed up my, uh, my preset mouse button for uh, attack move. So I kept trying to attack move, and I was like, why is it not working? Because the button got unbound. That That's so, what happened. So, stream and Ramsey, I've got a confession to make. Okay. You're going to laugh at me, and I'm sorry. I don't know how to attack move, Ramsey. It's no in, it's in settings. Me. It's a no setting. I, I, I know it's in settings. I've messed around with a little bit. I just, I'm so bad at it. I can't, like, switch to A and A click and then switch off of A to auto. And I, I end up trying to walk away, then move my mouse to click on them to auto attack and walk away. And half the time, I miss my mouse and click past them and end up walking back into them. That's yeah. why I play tanks. I don't need to auto-attack when I'm playing tank supports. Definitely. Uh, I, I'll get it real quick, an update. Um, one second. All right. I just sent a message to, to Coach uh, Firstin to, uh, to see about start time. But, yeah, attack move. 
it's a setting. I bind it to a, a side mouse button, and then you're good to go. Um, and then you can set it to where it'll preference the enemy minion or person who is closest to your cursor, and then that's how you do. And then I have it bound to A, which target champions only, and then, you know, still not great. It still looks clunky as heck when I'm using it, but it's pretty, pretty useful. I, that's why I've been trying to get better with it. So in our in-house games, I can drop wards in front of you while you're running at me and you'll auto-attack the ward accidentally? That's what you're saying? No, because I know how to use it properly. I know how to use it properly. The first time I tried to do it, I, was, I just kept autoing minions while I was trying to chase people down and it just... <laughs> got well, you set it to be the thing that's closest to your cursor and you just like click on them and it'll like right. uh, try to get you there to where you can attack them. I've learned that if I'm playing an ADC, I click on the person I want to attack and I take my hands off the keyboard. I just, just let the ADC just, yeah. <laughs> oh, you just let it go, man. Like Cat Ultimate. Just take your hands off the keyboard, let the champion do its thing. <laughs> Definitely. We'll see. I still don't have any updates for you. Uh -oh. I wonder if everyone's facing the same dilemma where we all have no chat and thus no one can update anyone. Yeah, I just checked, and it looks like uh, they're not playing a game, which is good. It looks like they're what? still sitting in lobby. It looks like, based on what I can see from checking out uh, someone's screen, it looks like they're doing a pro draft, uh, and we just can't see it because we can't see the chat. That so, would make the so most they'll sense. <clears throat> so they'll pop in hopefully. So when we see the uh, actual draft, it'll probably go by pretty quick because uh, they'll have done it in pro draft. But uh, that'll just give us time to talk about the draft in the three-minute spectator delay. Oh, I didn't say it at the top of the broadcast. I'll say it now. Remember, uh, we casters uh, are on a two-minute delay. So if you say something in chat, we'll respond to it maybe two minutes later. We might just not see it, but that's fine. Um, but then, of course, within the client, there's the three-minute spectator delay. So we're seeing things three minutes late. You're seeing things a grand minute, uh, a grand total of five minutes late. Um, as per CSL, CLOL, all the regulations, just to keep things fair and fun so stream sniping can't possibly happen because, honestly, after five minutes of leak, like, there's no way what you're seeing is going to be relevant anymore. Yeah, I mean, I, I will argue that, you know, some ward and vision placement is semi-relevant. If I drop a pink ward deep in a jungle and, and they see it and you stream snipe us, perhaps you'll find a pink ward here. Yeah, we're going to transition Otherwise, right into pick bands, and they're going friend. as quick as we expected because of... Yep. We see a Yasuo ban from Pepperdine. That is unusual. Santo Massey's preference on that champion. Interesting. And a Hecarim is not surprising. Hecarim is very strong. Don't mind me, stream. I've got to turn this volume down just a smidge. There we go. Orn picked up here on the side of Pepperdine. Uh, having not looked at the pro draft, I don't know if that is actually a first pick or perhaps picks later. Yeah. That Kali would not surprise me. So this is based on the pro draft, so I'm sure everyone is just picking their uh, preferred champions, so. Or the champion for their role. So we're not gonna see what the actual pick order was, but I do imagine this is a correct ban order at the very least. Yeah, I would hope so. And another Nidalee from Windshield. Paired with a Kiana. Okay, so I like this pairing because the Kiana has the ability to dash in, guaranteed stun, follow up Nidalee Spear, and ooh, baby, am I happy to see a set. <laughs> set mid, it seems. Hey. I mean, he's got a big, you thick shield, and Kiana has a hard time blowing him up. So, hey, I'll take it. Who dares defy my will? Jarvan ban, I really like this from the side. Uh, really so the fact it. that we're seeing a lot of jungle bans leads me to believe that this uh, Nidalee slash Volinaire were some of the last picks for these te two teams, since they both preferred. I've heard a Mumu with the Leandries and such it is really, really scary this patch as well. A Mumu's pretty broken. Yeah, I believe so. Oh, and a Samira pickup. I have not gotten to see a Samira on the new patch. Kogma? What? 
Okay. Is this, are we thinking this is on? Oh, wow. This is Jugger Mom. Are we gonna be okay. seeing maybe the, the Kraken Slayer on the Kog'Maw, or what, yeah, what I mean, are you thinking? I'm not sure. Before the patch, I would have told you this is a long-range AP Kog'Maw just trying to dish out artillery damage. With the new patch, I have no idea. I wouldn't be surprised to see a Kraken Slayer on him. I mean, he'll, he will absolutely shred through this Volibear and set, but the Leona is going to be a nightmare for Kog'Maw to get away from. So mm -hmm. he's, There's not a ton of great peel. Yes, the Lulu can Polymorph. Yes, the Lulu can ult the Kog'Maw. But outside of that, I mean, Orn Ultimate wants to be starting fights, not just peeling somebody off of a Kog'Maw. So very curious. This is going to require Bobby Joe to have absolutely perfect positioning. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see what a uh, marksman item, uh, if even a marksman item, goes on to this Kog'Ma here. I mean, in terms of options, you got the Gale Force, giving him a little bit more mobility, the Kraken Slayer that works a lot like a Blade of the Ruined King, um, and then Immortal Shield Bow, which just gives him a little bit more, uh, you know, survivability when it comes into these fights. So I I would imagine, though, of the, the possible items, um, you know, I, honestly, all of them I could see working in this composition. I don't know enough about Gale Force to know if the dash is worth it, um, or the dodge, I should say, is worth it. Um, but I could see, uh, you know, something worthwhile coming out of both the Kraken Slater and the Immortal Shield Bow. Yeah, no, very, very hard to predict, you know, with a new patch, new champions. I mean, this is, this is such a spicy draft, Ramsey. I am so excited for this matchup. I think in terms of lane priorities and lane matchups, I think the Akali is going to shove the Orn in. I believe that is a counter matchup. I'm not 100% sure. Mm -hmm. I think Akali does kind of abuse Orn a little bit in the early game. Yeah, she, the, yeah, she does. The Nidalee should be able to get in and seal some of this Volibear's jungle. Uh, but Volibear is really strong early. I mean, for a big tanky bear, he's got a lot of damage yeah. early. So I think a lot of this is going to come down to does Santo Massey have the push in the mid lane? And is he able to open up the jungle for the Nidalee? And will he be able to, to roam in and out of the jungle to help out Windchill? Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to see. Uh, I'm kind of having fun trying to, to predict items just based on what I, what I read here. But um, it'll be interesting to say the least, because I'm sure we're going, we're going to see things that we couldn't possibly predict come out of uh, this itemization today. But uh, I'm looking at that Lulu Kogma, and I wonder if she'll take that Imperial Mandate um, for that it wouldn't, added it wouldn't damage. Wouldn't surprise me a whole lot. And then for the Leona, maybe the the Shirelias, because I know everybody seems to like the Shirelias this patch. Not as much the Locket, but oh, I, I think a hundred percent. This is a run at you team comp from Victoria. The set, the Volley Bear, the Leona. They want to run at your face jump on top of you and just make it, you know, just miserable for these squishy, semi-immobile carries on the side of Pepperdine. Yeah, so so definitely I think we'll see the Shrelias on the Leona, and then probably we'll see, um, you know, one of the mar Marksman items. I don't see an AP sort of Kogma coming out from this composition, but then again, with without something more AP on the Kogma, like your AP damage is nidalee. Yeah. Nidalee alone. Right. So a lot is going to come down to can Windchill carry, right? How big is his backpack this game? And, you know, Set, Leona, Volibear, those are tanky champions. They can step up and take a spear. Now, I have been seeing on the Set, you know, mains forums, some Blade of the Rune King lethality sets trying to really just, you know, deal some true damage and you know, be a bruiser assassin. So it's not out of the realm of possibility, but it would surprise me. Yeah, we're starting to load into the game now. It'll be another minute probably before we get into the action. But just uh, taking a step back from composition, from items, just looking at the players on these two teams, how does this matchup look today, Cody? Like what... Uh, what are, are you thinking? Because I certainly think it is a, a step up in terms of uh, the difficulty that Pepperdine has been seeing so far in this competition and will be a, uh, a fairly intense game. Very competitive. I, 
I agree completely. I think this is going to oh, we are in game. I think this is without question the hardest matchup Pepperdine has faced since the tournament at the beginning of the season, I, I would say. Uh, you know, I think this is really going to push them. They're going to need to be coordinated. They're going to have good objective focus. Uh, no simple mistakes. No backing, you know, too far from Tower and getting picked off in the mid lane. We just, today, we cannot afford small mistakes like that. And, and really, we'll need to, you know, just make sure. Dot your I's, cross your T's. Do all the little things. Secure your objectives. Win game. It's easy. Yeah. Just win. Just win. Be Just better. Win. That's right. All right. I'm really interested to see these uh, these new jungle items in action too because I haven't seen that too much as someone who does not play much, if any, jungle myself. So I'll be honest with you. That was the the one set of items I didn't even look at. I I will be learning with you, Ramsey. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so... sure chat can tell us how the breakdown is. Definitely, but if someone in chat, oh, nice uh, Nilly Spear getting some early poke onto it the Akali. It looks like we've got a lane swap, perhaps. We're going to see a top lane set yeah. with teleport and phase rush. Oh, canceling that back from the Akali. Yeah, well done one from uh, Windchill. Oh, chat, check in. Place your bets now. Windchill and Evan Cakes are in the game. How many oh. times am I going to say Wind Cakes or Evan Evan Chill. Chill. Uh, again, I'm going to stick with my bet of two. I'm going to say two? twice. Okay. I'm going to say twice. Because the first time I'm going to be like, hey, and the second time you're going to be like, oh, and then, you know, we're, we're, we're going to be good. <laughs> but definitely. So for, for, for chat who maybe hasn't been obsessively reading the patch notes, what I do know about the jungle items thus far is that they now operate a lot like the support item. They automatically level up over time. So... It'll be interesting to see. And you are completely correct about this uh, lane swap that we saw come out from the side of University of Victoria. The set is going against the Orn up in the top lane, and the Akali is going to be kind of bullying that Kiana mid. Yeah, really putting the pressure on early there. Because Akali has a little bit of range, she does win a lot of melee matchups with her ability to throw out those shurikens and then get the empowered auto attack. So not surprising the count is going to be pushed in for probably the majority of this early game. Yeah, and we should note here in the mid lane that the Akali has teleport while the Kiana has ignite. So a little bit more kill pressure on the Kiana, but a little bit more map pressure on the side of the Akali. Yep. And I think that's the right decision from the Akali. She'll be able to push in the lane and then roam and TP back or push in the lane back and TP where needed. And on top of that, it does open up the ability for Victoria to do a 1-3-1 one, one with two teleports or to really play objectives and play macro by putting someone with teleport up in the bot lane, TPing them into a Baron to stop the objective or to start it. And then you've got another teleport, you can move back down. Oh, we're seeing some aggression coming out here on the bot side. The heal going out onto the Lulu to keep her alive. The Leona did use her ignite in that fight, but nothing else expended on the side of University of Victoria. Yeah, really good trade back from Bobby Joe. Some very, very even trades going out in the top side there. It does look like the Orn comes out a bit ahead. Yeah, I don't love the set Orn matchup. I don't think set is particularly favored in that. You know, it's, it's, the Orn just has so much ability to dodge Set's stun and his damage, so I would not expect to see a ton of... Oh, oh the E coming out here on to Windchill's Diddly. He has to flash out to make sure that the follow-up CC from the Volibear Q does not go down. Yeah, and as we said, you know, in order for Windchill's Nidalee to have priority, Kiana has to be pushed up. And if not, then the Volibear gets to be the first one into invade. Oh, That's the Leona E going down. This is the second time Evan Cakes has been caught out by a Leona E. And the kill does go over to the side of the University of Victoria, Samira. And, uh... That's, that's rough. Burning your flash and dying. Not the way we wanted this game to start. Definitely. And, you know, this was the second time we've seen so far this game um, that uh, Evan Cakes has been caught out by the Leona E. Sorry, I was trying to read chat and talk at the same time, and I shouldn't do that. 
Okay, so it upgrades after five smites. So yeah, so like a uh, like a support item in the sense that it up upgrades after a certain number of actions, such as you know attacking minions or enemy champions, but not based on gold. It's based on the smites. Yeah, I, this early game thus far, you know, about a 1,000 gold lead opened up for Victoria. I am beginning to get a little worried for Pepperdine. You know, they wanted to start to build early advantages with this Nidalee. And, you know, five minutes into the game now, we've not seen that happen. And in fact, the Nidalee only has a two CS lead with all of her jungle down and the Void Bear jungle coming up. So not how Pepperdine wanted the first early time to play out. Yeah, especially getting that early kill onto the Samira bot side. So we're just seeing some chill farming going on so far here on both sides. We're seeing a little bit of a CS lead uh, forming for the Akali in the mid lane, which is what we expected out of this matchup. Yeah, that's exactly how it should play out. The Akali should be able to shove in, roam, come back, shove in, roam, rinse, repeat. It's really going to fall to Santo Massey to try to, you know, clear as quickly as possible and, and you know, match those roams. It should be noted that this is the first time that the Kogma is backing in the game at six minutes in. The set has not backed yet either, so now the Orn has a little bit of an item advantage. And this opens up the ability for Victoria just to rotate right into that dragon. It's great objective control and understanding the macro of the back timings. Yeah, Pepperdine didn't even have any vision control over in that dragon pit area. So it's it's hard to know if they even were aware that uh, Victoria was going to be taking that dragon. Yeah, we saw some pings go down on it. I imagine they suspected that Victoria was there. Yeah, things have calmed down a little bit after kind of a tumultuous early game. Mm-hmm. Man, and I do not know enough about the items this patch to be able to tell you what people are building into at this point. Oh, I, Unfortunately. Absolutely. Does you Rage do Knife build into Rage Blade? <laughs> oh, probably. Oh, Kiana Ultimate going down there, getting this, not getting the stun onto the Akali, but... Yeah, it looks like Rage Knife builds into Rage Blade. So I would imagine we're going to see a Rage Blade out of the Kogma. So it is going a bit of mixed damage uh, onto the Kogma there. Yeah, that seems like the smart decision for me. It's going to prevent Victoria from being able to just stack armor. I mean, the, the Void Bear and the set want to stack some armor. So, you know, making it so that way the Kiana doesn't have to face the teams, just absolutely stacking armor and, and negating her lethality. Yeah, and it is important to note that Rage Blade is not a mythic item, so we still have yet to see what we will have go down onto this Kogma. So I am very interested to see. Taking notes myself for my, my own games. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, fantastic Ooh. trade so far here from Sansa Massey. Using the Kiana Self to dodge out very well. But... Uh, what's that? Uh, Suez? Suez seems to have kept it pretty, uh, Soes. <laughs> seems to have kept it pretty even there on the Akali. Yeah, I mean, having that fleet footwork, it's, uh, become very common on Akali. Just gives you the ability to regen quickly. We do see now, uh, everybody aside from... Evan Cakes Lulu is level 6 at this point, so. Time for the game to get a little bit spicier, but now the Kogma, importantly, can farm a bit more safely. Good vision control from Victoria spotting out that mm -hmm. Nidalee as she attempted to maybe find an invader, a scuttle crab. And despite the uh, the advantages that University of Victoria have had earlier in this game, they do just have only only a 1,000 gold lead, which is definitely more than Pepperdine wants, but it could be way worse at this point. Yeah, absolutely. Well, 
little skirmish there in the mid lane. Both oh, another E going down onto Pepperdine's bot side. A lot doesn't come of it. Will Bobby yeah, Joe actually, be able to turn this around? It actually comes out being a fairly even trade. Very well played from Bobby Joe to really get a lot of return damage back on the Eliana. Maybe make her question going in so deep next time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this Kog'Ma is definitely not someone you want to discount at, you know, almost any point in the game. Especially as he starts getting these items and especially as he has his, you know, personal bodyguard in the form of a small, uh, Yordle creature. The Lulu. Crazy evil witch Yordle. The Volley Bear is, is here looking for potentially that that kill onto the side of Pepperdine. Though we do see if Pepperdine doesn't continue to push up, there is a, a ward protecting them in that lane bush. Volibear is sick, so he can jump on them and get the stun in his thunderstorm. Yeah, and that stun coupled with the Leona E and stun lockdowns, but it does not look like Pepperdine's going to push up. I wonder if Victoria will drop their Rift Herald here. Oh, the Akali. So well there with the Kiana ultimate going down. Will Nidalee ultimately get the kill onto the Akali? Does! Well played. Very well played. Good flash from the Kiana and ultimate to lock that Akali down and allow the spear to land and start... And to get away. That can't be discounted. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. Santo Masi definitely was clenched up there. <laughs> hoping <laughs> hoping that uh, the health did not tick down Living any further. With sub 10 health. Calculated. Definitely calculated. It's important to note that next Mountain Drake is up. So it'll be either an Ocean Soul or an Infernal Soul this game. Which either is great for both these teams. Yeah. And and both if either team gets one of those souls, it will spell either the end of the game or a very difficult road to climb for the opposing team. Yeah, they know that that ward is in that bush in the river and the volleyballer is there. Uh oh. Gets the uh -oh. oh, the double stun goes down on the side of University of Victoria, the orange TP comes arrived. down, but it's everyone here. Set ultimate comes down. The Lee, uh, the Samira, excuse me, dash goes on to the Kog'Maw and gets the kill as well. This does not look very good for Pepperdine. The triple root goes down on the Kiana Q, but Akali goes in and manages to get the kill onto Windchill under the turret. And this just was an awful fight for the side of Pepperdine. Scrappy to say the least, but not very good. Good little bit of return down there at the end on the smear, forcing her flash and heal. But that just felt a little bit like too little too late on the side of Pepperdine in that fight. Yeah, I mean, you know, the Foley Bear was there first, gets the Kogma flash, locks down the Lulu, and Scott did get his TP in first, but still the man advantage to Victoria, and they're able and to... And it will be an Infernal Soul this game. Samira with Infernal Soul, Akali with Infernal Soul. That's, I mean, that's terrifying. There's a, yeah. I, I hope Pepperdine can find a way to secure the next couple dragons. Definitely. If they cannot, then there is uh, pretty much no way to get back into this game. Yeah, if, if these, you know, assassins... I call Samira an assassin. She's an ADC, but she feels like an assassin sometimes when she's jumping on you and ulting on everybody <laughs> if they get an infernal it's it's going to be very very difficult so probably both teams should be playing it fairly low and slow until the next drake though university of victoria can afford a little bit more aggression here Now that uh, all the craziness has ended, if you'll take a look in that dragon area, you can just see all the wards left over from that previous fight that, you know, Victoria used for their knowledge. I mean, that is six wards 
in the jungle area for the red team. Just wonderful vision control for them on the bot side. Yeah, I think that's something that we're definitely seeing between the two teams right now, that the the vision control is looking really, really, really good for the University of Victoria. Oh, will the Akali go down to the tower hit? Yes, that was a lovely little trade, though. I'm sure Santo Masi wishes he didn't die there, but getting the return kill on the Akali was definitely good on him. But Winchell is in a bit of trouble here with the Volley Bear here in the mid lane. The Volley Bear R's the tower. Will the Nidalee be able to get away? And no, Volley Bear is able to Chomps just... Chomps down on the Nidalee. It's important to know the Nidalee before that fight had a nearly 1000 gold lead on that volley bear based on and CS. And level advantage. And oh and level advantage. So yep. that definitely is a fight Windchill was not happy to have lost. Yeah. And with the tower going down there as well. Two kills and mid tower is very so much, much gold going over to yep. the side of University of Victoria. Of two towers I should say. Oh my goodness. A nearly, or an over 3k gold lead coming here. Almost 4k gold lead for the side of the University of Victoria. Ooh. The set ultimate comes out here and is able to get the the kill onto Orn and barely survives. The Nidalee is able to get the shutdown, but the tower dive comes out here in the bot lane and there are four people who just nuke Bobby Joe and Evan Cakes underneath their turret. Yeah. Red buff just keeping the Volley Bear there alive, that extra health regen. You know, this is from bad to worse here for Pepperdine, unfortunately. Yeah, definitely. It just seems like the, the map control from the side of University of Victoria, knowing where to be and where to take those opportunities, is just leagues beyond what Pepperdine is showing us at the moment. Oh, and, and I think the, the crux of that last play in the bot lane is that because there are no towers left in the mid lane, the Akali has free roam of both jungles, very easily able just to roam down in behind Pepperdine's bot lane and, you know, force the dive. It's going to be crucial that Pepperdine keep their uh, jungles littered with wards so they don't just continue to get snowballed on as, you know, Victoria just rotates through the jungle. And like you were saying before we even got into these matches, this is a very snowball heavy meta, so it seems thus far. So once you're ahead, it's it's very hard to lose and very hard for Pepperdine to win. Yeah. Next dragon coming up here in about a minute. You know, I would imagine it goes over to The stun Victoria. comes out here onto the Lulu from the Leona in the prime position to get the QE onto Bobby Joe there, but does manage to get away with their lives. They're trying to turn it. The TP comes out from the side of Pepperdine with the Orn. The Orn ultimate goes out and gets caught in the Samira W. That ability is broken, Ramsey. I'm sorry, but that's <laughs> just so strong to have on, on an AD carry. Yeah, we know that... Scott is unhappy that his ultimate went that way, and it looks like the uh, University of Victoria is going to get that dragon before Pepperdine can really do anything about it. And, and I don't think Pepperdine should contest that there. They're, they're too far behind. They don't have to contest that dragon. It isn't Infernal Soul. If you lose... But now they're on Soul Point. True, true. But they're on Soul Point now. Instead of Pepperdine contest, if they lose the fight and all of a sudden your base oh, is half gone. Oh, Windchill's in a spot of trouble here. The Lulu ultimate comes down and helps save Windchill's life. Everybody's so low in this fight. The Fantastic. Kiana ultimate comes out super clutched there. Scott doing a lot of work, but ultimately, will it be enough? Santo is here as well as Windchill for the Akali. Holly morphed the Akali, making her into a cute, fluffy little animal, unable to defend herself. <laughs> now, only if that, uh, if Runan's worked on uh, the polymorph there, could turn the entire team into a bunch of fluffy bunnies, <laughs> then maybe that would uh, help Pepperdine out. You Ultimately, know, it does seem like that fight was meh. 
Yeah, I mean, two for two is a win for Pepperdine. If you're behind, trading resources is good for you. I mean, you picked up a little bit of shutdown gold here and there. So, you know, not as well as Pepperdine might have hoped, but certainly not bad to trade uh, kills there. You have to look, though. Four towers down on Pepperdine's side and zero on the University of Victoria. So that that map pressure alone from the University of Victoria has got to make Pepperdine feel nervous. Absolutely. There's a lot of standing gold left for Pepperdine to get. But I don't know how they're going to get it. I mean, they just can't safely push up in any lane because Victoria has so much control over the rivers. You start to see the pings go down to the bot side jungle. Where's that Akali? If she's out of vision for more than a couple of seconds, you really need to be scared. Mm hmm. And you were very right. We do see the Rage Blade onto the Kogma here, as well as the. Uh, is it Hextech Chem Sword or something along those lines? Uh, basically, ex Executioner's Calling is building into that right now. Yeah. I'm not sure. Let me look it up. He has Executioner's right now, but it builds into something called something Chem Sword, I believe. Yeah, that sounds exactly right. I just. It's the one that gives the Elder Dragon execution ability, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yeah, something like that. It's Grievous Wounds, uh, and then it, when they're below a certain amount of health, they get 60% instead of 40% Grievous Wounds, that, all that. Yeah. Which makes sense because of the healing on the side of uh, University of Victoria. Still not a mythic item, I can see, unless that purple item that I can't tell what it is at this point. <laughs> <laughs> is there interesting to see we do see that is the uh the shirelias on the side of pepperdine's lulu and the locket of iron solari on university of victoria's leona yeah I, i'm a little surprised i would have thought the leona wanting to run at pepperdine wanted would have wanted to speed up the volibear in the set but priding that uh, or excuse me um caring more about that big shield than the ability to run you know at their faces yeah See Immortal Shield Bow on the Samira here. A nice chunk of damage coming out from the Nidalee. Those spears are hurting. Important to notice that really, really... Oh my goodness, the Leona ultimate comes down, ultimately gets the, I believe, the full stun onto... My goodness, so many ultimates going down here in this fight. It is not looking good for Pepperdine, though... The Orn is here trying to do work, but ultimately the CC is just so much. The Orn health nearly nuking Bobby Joe and Evan Cakes there. What a set ultimate. I mean, Man. pick him up and put him down. That was so much. I was still trying to talk about the Sunfire Cape on the Volibear here, and then all of a sudden, just like Pepperdine, I was not watching the minimap. <laughs> Uh, I it's gonna be extremely difficult for Pepperdine to be able to do anything with this game at this point. They no, are right. short of a miracle 8K steal down on, gold. Yeah, short of a miracle steal on this dragon soul for Victoria, this game is pretty much in the bag. And you do see Pepperdine heading towards this dragon, knowing they need the steal here, but I don't think they can. Windchill, Windchill steals Windchill. the Drake. With the miracle steal! <laughs> oh my goodness, I am sure Winchell is screaming. Will not stop screaming. <laughs> that, oh my that is goodness. that is an MVB play. If if Pepperdine finds a way to claw themselves back into this game, that goes in the highlight reel for sure. Now, this Baron should be uncontestable. Nidalee is is no more, so. Baron does go over to Victoria, but crisis averted in the form of the Elder, or the uh, Infernal Soul, for the time being, at least. Yeah, and I mean, if there's one thing we know about Windchill, is that he he does know how to jungle. Uh, he, he makes mistakes, but 
just like everybody else in these matches, right? But if if one thing push come to shove, you can rely on him fairly frequently to clutch it out when it really, really needs to be done. Absolutely. But now, that nearly uh, 10k gold lead and Baron buff on the side of uh, University of Victoria here, definitely not going to help any of Pepperdine's uh, current struggles. And in fact, it's 25 minutes into the game and Pepperdine still hasn't taken a single tower. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. You know, I... Pepperdine drafted in such a way that, you know, the Nidalee had to get online early and couldn't. The Kiana, not a great early landing phase. And then the Kog'Maw, who, who really hasn't come online yet. And, you know, without snowballing early and getting this Kog'Maw to a point where he can be an artillery machine, the draft from Pepperdine's just looking like it didn't pan out the way they wanted it to, unfortunately. I'm a little bit confused by the Kogma overall, but I, I think the Kogma was the late game insurance policy. Yes. And unfortunately, with how fast this game has snowballed, I don't think the that insurance policy is gonna pay out in time. Yeah. I certainly don't think it's the Kogma's fault. I think there were oh, plenty of, of other mistakes, but I don't fully understand the Kogma pick in general. Especially with such a new patch and so much new going on, Kog'Maw is really, really reliant on a certain set of parameters to come online, right? So, Levels and items. Yeah. Especially the items, right? So, yeah. With, with a patch where that is so uncertain at this point, it seems a bit strange to draft him. But, you know, Pepperdine is being whittled away here by... You know, three inhibitors down, Baron waves at their nexus. All the University of Victoria needs is this fight here, and it looks like they're going for it. The Orn ultimate goes down, but uh, the CC is there, and Orn can't pick it up again, and all the kills go down, and the minions take the nexus. There's really not much to, not much to say. Yeah, just really well played from start to finish by the University of Victoria. I mean short of the dragon steal i mean a near flawless game they lost no towers they gave up i think five kills overall and and one dragon steal so i just you know not much to say but well played and and let's see what pepperdine can do to adapt yeah important to uh recognize on the side of university of victoria i carry you living up to his name not dying once in that game of yeah. course Everyone on the side of the University of Victoria performed very, very well that game, I think, personally. Um, but I just wanted to highlight that, because it's not often in a competitive game of League of Legends that a player can make it through without dying once. Which, you know, is not always what you look for. KDA isn't the only thing you play for, especially in competitive, but is interesting when you get to see it. Yeah, no, it's very true, Rimsy. Very true. So, and, you know... I've got to ask, we don't know 100% the pick ban order, right? Because they did it in Pro Draft. Samira feels really good into that team. Like, blocks the Orn ultimate. That's your major way to engage. And the AD champion just, like, kind of casually has a counter button to it. Uh, you know, I, I think Samira's got to get banned. I really think that is a problem pick right now for what Pepper and I was trying to do. We'll see what they do uh, in terms of uh, ban adjustments. Yeah, we're getting into lobby again now, but I expect we'll do another pro draft before we get into the official lobby. We'll see if we get the link this time, so I can potentially uh, show that to y'all. I, I would like we to. Do, I do see chat. Seems to be functioning, so here's how Yes. Hoping. Now we can see if that'll uh, work out. Whoops. I see Bubblegum here saying the Pepperdines lost most of their games in Champ Select. Uh, I don't know that they've lost most of their games in Champ Select, but I do think there are times where their Champ Select hasn't played out perhaps the way they wanted to. The theory seems okay. I can just see the reasoning behind it. Uh, 
and and then maybe the execution doesn't quite fit or doesn't quite match up or you know something happens so hard to say that they just lose in champ select i don't think that's a, a totally fair assessment but i will say that you know maybe pools need to be broadened or you know we need to to learn mm -hmm. uh how to you know just kind of sharpen it up i'm not i'm not 100 percent sure what the answer is yeah <laughs> if I, I think if i was 100% sure i would probably be coaching uh, team liquid so <laughs> yeah if you absolutely were able to 100% break down every single reason a team wins or loses uh, that would be very very true i think it, it's fairly fair to say that um a lot of times though while maybe it's it's less fair to say that uh pepperdine uh loses um in in draft i think it is fairly safe to say pepperdine sometimes loses in the first you know two minutes of the game and just struggles to come back they, they don't play well from behind but that we have seen those pivotal games especially in the west coast conference last year um uh hi biter so people are saying hi to us in the chat um you know pepperdine has had those games where they've been able to turn it around they've been able to find something deep inside and get at it but it's just not the norm they can do it when everything is on the line but in your traditional season game it's not something you typically see so i don't know if it's a mix of you know these games don't matter as much or you know just general mentality but uh Pepperdine does tend to struggle playing from behind. Yeah, absolutely. Although I will say we have seen, you know, when in the uh, UCLA match, I think it was at the start of the season, you know, really well played from behind. So there are definitely glimmers there. And we're, we see moments of, sh of where they're shining even from behind. And so I think kind of recapturing that magic uh, is really, really important. You know, we've seen this Nidalee pick a couple times now from Windchill, and it feels like... You don't need to put him on Nidalee. You it doesn't him... feel like it's working, and, and I'm not sure why. I'm not sure if it's because there isn't mid lane priority and the Nidalee can't get in and invade, or the Nidalee's too squishy. I, whatever it is, it doesn't feel like it's paying dividends, and you want to see Windchill carrying him. Mean, he's so good. He's so clutch in these key moments, so... I'm hoping we can find something that either more comfort or more playmaking potential, you know, or, or just, you know, setting up Santo, you know, it just, it feels like that synergy is not quite blending the way you'd want it to. Yeah, certainly. It seems that, yeah, Pepperdine needs to figure something out because they were looking a lot better at the beginning of this season, but now they're kind of a, a mix <laughs> We're waiting here just to sort out side select for this next game. Yeah, I'm still waiting on it. <laughs> That's what you do here in uh, in collegiate casting. You just wait while people figure out basic mechanics like the lobby, and pro draft, uh, and eventually the game. <laughs> We'll get a full team someday, full production team someday, Ramsey. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. So, let's it looks like uh, Sue West from University of Victoria might be in our chat. Hello. Oh. Tell me how to say your name up. correctly if you're if that is who you are. Right. But yeah. anyway, I want to say names right, but that's why I tend to not say them for the enemy team. I feel bad, but I just don't know how to. <laughs> oh, the the set play. Oh, that ultimate at the end. That Orn ulting onto the Cogmine and Nidalee just. Er exploding their health bars was was beautiful if you guys are always questioning our motives for drafts then can you just call just join our call <laughs> i'd love to join the call i would but i also don't want uh to spoil any strategies i'm happy just to you know we're also not allowed to we can't stream it plus it's just part of being a caster you just you you question and you get proven wrong that's the whole yeah. point we know yeah, less than you do. Very much so. Disclaimer. We are reacting. We don't have inside knowledge, though we are part of Pepperdine. We're, we're not aware of what the draft strategy is. We're not aware of what's being said in comms. We can only see 
and, and make you know educated guesses and, and try to provide you the people and the the audience the fans the best analysis we can so we will get it wrong certainly i am not a professional caster i don't have a working knowledge of every meta and every lane and i'm sorry for that but we'll try to do the best we can yeah but we do it pretty much on purpose because we don't have the inside track on the other universities as well as so we're trying like while we're always going to be biased in favor of pepperdine just because you know she's our school we we want our our casting to be as fair as possible so that's part of it in fact I try to be harder on Pepperdine than I do the other teams because I want Pepperdine to get better and improve. So that's my rationale. Looks like perhaps a pro draft link has been sent. Maybe it might flash up on the screen there for us. Can you drop it in our, our chat there, Cotty? then I can copy paste it more easily so that we can Absolutely. show that to ch there you go all right it looks like we might have a I'm not seeing it if you sent it to me hmm. oh you sent it to me via messages and leak I can't do that it doesn't let me there we go How yeah our that? discord on discord all right opening up one of a million applications. There you yes, go. Yes, thank that? you. Success. Okay, we should be able to show you the the pro draft here. There we go. It's not started yet, but when we do. All right, let's talk picks. Let's talk bands. As said, I think the Samira is really important to take off the table. Um, I, I thought Scott played well on the Orn. You know, he just kind of tough luck that Samira has a button that counters that ultimate. Uh, and if Pepperdine wants to keep him on an Orn, I, you know, I think that's a great idea. Allow them to have that big, you know, team fight impact. But I think he, if if that's the decision, you got to take Samira off the table. It's just too strong. Now, I don't know if you dropped the Yasuo ban for it because the Yasuo does the same thing. And then obviously we've seen in our research some proficiency from uh victoria on yone so i don't know that's a safe band to drop and then same thing with the hecarim hecarim is the same thing as volley bear it's a run at you big disruptive team fighter so hard to say you know if the samira is going to get banned what to drop that's i'm thankful i don't have to make that decision but that would be the adaptation i would i would hope to see from pepperdine if, if it's feasible Definitely. It looks like the pro draft is starting, so. Let's see what comes out. Pepperdine up first. It looks like Pepperdine is still blue side. Mm -hmm. I believe University of Victoria was able to get side selection in that process, so they chose to stay red side. Yone is the ban on the side of yep. Pepperdine. Not surprising. Same, you know, looks like the first so two, far, same bands. So far, same two bands as the last game. Waiting here. Not too, too much to talk about. I wonder if we'll see anything different, but... I, I wouldn't be shocked if, if the bands are run back the same. I mean, it felt like... So I mean, I'd... Samira. There, there we see the Samira band. That was the one you were thinking might be might be different. But so far on the side of Ubix, sticking with the same bands and still heavily targeting Windchill there. I would not be surprised to see a Hecarim ban here and a first pick Yasuo for Santa Massey and just try to get him on comfort. Or perhaps, you know, taking a little bit earlier of a jungle pick from the south. No, and we see the Yasuo ban. So the Hecarim left up. I'm curious to see if that will get picked up on the side of University of Victoria. Definitely. The Swordsman Brothers band away, and like you said, just so much band priority thrown the, at Winship. I would be surprised this Nidalee band goes through. Yeah, and we see the first, first pick Hecarim. First pick Hecarim. So, interesting. Yeah, I, I think that Nidalee ban is, is just an absolute mistake on the side of University of Victoria. 
Uh, I don't think that's the right band. I think they were mad about that uh, Infernal Drake steal more than anything (laughs) else, but I don't think it was the Nidalee that was the problem. It was just wind chill that was the problem there. Wind chill. Two big thumbs up because that one tilt play bought you a band, so well done, mate. And we see a Fiddlesticks. Now, I have not seen Fiddlesticks on this new patch. Very curious to see how that plays out. Is he a Leandre's user? I forget. Can he? Use... I would imagine so. He has a yeah. lot of AOE and uh, damage over time, so I would imagine he is. So Although, we could be seeing that. Riftmaker. Oh, true, he true. He has a lot of healing, too. He might be... And there's also the possibility this is a tank sticks. You never know. Very true. Could be top, Jin could be mid or support. Now, Jin is, I believe, the strongest AD carry in this meta, so... Mm-hmm. A and a favorite pick of Bobby Joe here, so uh, maybe I think that's maybe Pepperdine whammy. was angling for for Jin, and maybe they're upset. But I I couldn't tell you at this point because I haven't seen us play with the Hecarim, so uh, it'll be interesting to see how Pepperdine adapts to the Hecarim in this composition. A very get in there and get it done. The Ash, the Ash. not surprising, uh, able to kite out pretty well now. Particularly vulnerable to fiddle six ults over the walls into fear into not having any uh, ability to dash away. So, again, positioning from Bobby Joe, super crucial on these immobile carries. Definitely. But what's nice about the Ash is that it does, especially with the Ash arrow, you get the engage, but also disengaged, giving Bobby Joe tools that he didn't really have on that Kogma to be able just to survive and do more in these team fights. Hey, chimes Ooh. today. Bard, bard picked up on the side of Pepper Eye. Definitely the Shrillias on that oh, yeah. bard. And now, with all of the movement speed items that he typically builds. I will say, I love this pick from Pepper Eye. I think this is phenomenal. Bard ult is just a, huh, have a nice day, Jin. Try ulting me again. Throwing it down on the Jin completely counters that ability. And on top of that, if you land a nice two-man, three-man Bartle at an objective, Hecarim has a field day. I mean, he just gets to ult in for free and fear everybody and and just be a menace. So, you know, it's going to come down to execution. Hopefully we see uh, Dragon King Hots, you know, clutch it out. But I really like this pick from Pepperdine. Yeah, I would like to say bubblegum combo. No, you are not allowed to join the call. Actually, that was Scott just being Scott for a little bit. You are not allowed to join the uh, the the call, Discord call for the team during games. Someone just said that they were upset that they didn't know they could join. You cannot. It's actually not allowed. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I would love it. I'd love to hear the internal workings, but sadly. Not today. Oh, a Diana ban. Interesting. That surprises me a little bit. I wonder if they were thinking Diana, Diana top lane, perhaps? Yeah. Or maybe uh, the... You sh- should mention, just as you were talking about the bar, the Akali did get locked in. Mm-hmm. Wukong, Camille, both targeting team fighting top laners from the side of University of Victoria. Trying to take and those tools ban. away from Scott. I, I I totally understand the respect set ban. I mean, if Hecker wants to ult in, the set ban and the set just ults him right back out. So I think that's a very smart ban from the side of Pepperdine. See what the I would expect the, this Leona to get locked in. You know, I, I would love to know the thought process behind the Diana ban and not the Leona ban. I mean, we saw University of Victoria hover it, perhaps picking it before the Akali. And I'm curious to know, with the Fiddlesticks locked in already and the Akali locked in, maybe they were thinking mid lane Akali, to- or sorry, top lane Akali mid Diana, and that's the reason for the Diana ban. But I think that Leona really pushed around the bot lane, so. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Echo going here onto Santo Massi. Echo is a big fan of Proto Bell, and Proto Bell is now a mythic item. So Echo has been showing up a lot in solo queue. And very strong pick. I like it. What about Echo into Akali? Is that why they weren't too scared of the Akali there? Or yeah, I mean, it's a skill matchup. You know, Echo has the ability to push her out. He does have a little bit better wave clear with a little bit more range. 
and a Shen pick. Now, this is a classic combo. Mm -hmm. Shen on top of Hecarim. Huge teamfight potential. Really great adaptation for Pepperdine. I like this a lot. Bartle locks down two people. Echo Bubble on top. Hecarim ults on top. Shen ults on top. I mean, we're talking about layering CC in teamfights. I'm really liking this draft from Pepperdine. I hope they can execute. Yeah. This is, this I, th is I think it's a good adjustment. There are adjustments that they needed to make. A gangplank into the Shen up in the top lane. Great counter pick uh, from University of Victoria. The Shen wants to ult down in the team fights, and the can gangplank can just drop the cannon barrage and say, hey, I'm helping. So good adaptation, or I guess response from the U University of Victoria. Definitely. And so we're about to get into the formal pick bands. I'll show that those on the screen again when we get there. But these are adjustments that we needed to see from the side of Pepperdine. It's just now to see if they will be able to execute, just like you said. I think I'm literally copying you. But uh, I just wanted to reiterate, it's all about how well they can play it this game because i think pepperdine uh they had a a decent draft uh last time but they just weren't able to execute it didn't seem so uh i am so we'll excited MG. in fact i might be more excited for this game than any game we've cast thus far i think these team comps are awesome i think this meta suits these teams i'm really really excited to see how this plays out it'll be it'll be interesting to say the least I'm looking for really crazy team fights around objectives. I mean, Fiddlesticks is great in Baron Pits and in Dragon Pits and in Rivers, right? His ultimate is so much AoE. Hecker, the same thing. Big, impactful AoE ultimate. This is going to be awesome. I, I hope the uh, the audience is just as hyped as I am. Viewers. Oh, chat's going wild. Yeah, UV lots of people from stop. UVic coming uh, to support their team, which we're happy to have you. Uh, you may be smack-talking our dear Pepperdine, but we, we still love to have you here, and we're happy that we can cast this game for you. Um, but definitely, I mean, like you said, both teams uh, have great compositions this time, well-suited to the meta so far. So, the uh, you know, it'll just be up to which team does it better, and, you know, it'll be fair to say. Yeah, no, I, I think, you know, a fair bit of mobility out of the Akali, but other than that, the the UVC team is relatively immobile. I mean, yes, Gangplank has his oranges he can get out of a Bartle, but, you know, Jin's not good at dodging Bartle. Fiddlesticks, you know, the ultimate's the only real ability, and if... Uh, Dragon King Hot sees the ult the fiddle on a war charging his ult. He can't drop the bardo and completely hey, negate that ult. Never ultimate. pick so a fight you can't win. Execution, execution, execution. I think a lot of this game comes down to Dragon King Hot. I think really this bard is kind of the linchpin for this team in terms of setting up team fights and making things happen. I'm really excited to see if he can execute on yeah and seeing so not only is it a draft adjustment but also a roster adjustment because we know dragon king hots bard is his boy that is like what he likes to do and likes to play we were just talking yesterday before our among us event about bard and shrelia so uh, it'll be interesting to see how he coming into this roster at this point this little bit of a switch subbing him in uh, will pay off for Pepperdine because uh, they definitely switched to him to get this bard on the team. Yeah, and I think that's a great. I think it's a great plan. I'm really excited to see how it pans out. But yeah, I see some people saying Echo is disgusting in this uh, meta right now. So uh, that's that's what we hope. Being as slightly biased for Pepperdine as we are, um, but you know, we'll, we'll just have to see. It looks like you know. I I think we're going to be seeing fighters and Suez. Uh, Switching again, I would assume it's a Kali in the mid lane unless they are going to do Gangplank mid, a Kali top. But I couldn't tell you for sure. Because they did switch last time, I think. Right? Am I crazy? Yeah, they did. They did swap. So Because Suez was, uh, was mid against yep. uh, the Kiana. Yep. I, I would be very surprised to see a Gangplank into an Echo mid lane. Yes, he can dodge out of the stun, but... I 
you know, I, I, I think the Echo would, would put a hurting on the gameplay. And so the, the, Akali, they'll be switching, they'll be switching. Yeah, the Akali wants to be in mid lane to roam, to get into the jungle, and, and the GP wants to be top lane, so he could just drop his ult in dragon fights and not have to TP. So I would be very shocked if this gameplay went mid lane. All right. So we can expect them to switch, which makes my job, Love Like Soft, to remember to switch them when we get into the game. <laughs> exactly. Oh my goodness. The, the the perks of being a caster and the uh, one and only observer and the production team. Oh yeah. My job's simple. I just have to talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember, um, I think it was uh, Zofu in the chat saying Pepperdine small uh, indie, indie inting team. We're actually a small indie uh, a university production company. Uh, right. That's actually it's... what we are. We understand the mistype. You, you, you know, got it confused. But, uh... Not everybody is as on top of their memes as you are, Ramsey. Can't, can't blame the guy. I know, no, no. He got all mixed up. He got all mixed up. Giving him the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, we, we, lo we love you here, uh, even if you're from uh, uh, University of Victoria. Happy no, to have I'm you. Very happy to have people tuning in. Very happy. Yeah, so. Oh, my goodness. Do you think we're going to see the uh, the the locket of Iron Solari on the Leona again? I think so. I think, in fact, I think it fits more this game with the Hecker molting in, with the Echo wanting to dive in. I think the locket is it makes more sense in this game than perhaps it did in the last game. And you know, this is not the same run at you comp from Victoria. They're not looking for the set and the volley rare to go in. They're really looking for that fiddle six to find picks with the Jin follow-up from the ult. So I think the Lock of the Iron Solari probably the, the right decision here from the Leona. Yeah, I almost it almost seems like they kind of switch styles in terms of what what they're doing. Pepperdine is now the, like, we are going to go on top of you and ruin your life team. And now uh, the University of Victoria is the, we're going to find you in the dead of night and make it a living hell team. So, yeah, um, I, you mean, really all they're missing is the Nocturne, right? Like... You slot in a Nocturne mid lane instead of an Akali. It's just turn the lights off and spooktober. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, October a little bit late now. So it does see, So it'll be interesting because now whoever wins this game can say, you know, well, we, well, we did it better. Uh, you know, so it'll be interesting to see. I'm sure, I'm sure Pepper Knight's hoping that they can uh, take that sort of style and say, like, no, uh, we're going to own it this time and we're going we're gonna to pull through. But University of Victoria looked really, really clean in that last game. So they did. They did. I you know, I'm going to say draft ever so slightly won by Pepperdine. I think their comp is a little bit easier to execute. You know, the, the Hecker Molt's a little bit easier to land than the Fiddle Six Ult. The Shen, a little bit easier to execute on than the Gangflex. So I think this is going to be a banger, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, we're loading into the game now. It's going to be just another couple of seconds before we get that... Uh up for y'all I think we're all good now boom and we are in it all right show me some spicy level ones let's go well currently uh Ubik is is fanning out into a five point it looks like pepperdine is doing much the same a little and bit more Top the side heavy on the side of Pepperdine. Top side as of right now. So maybe not the Akali swapping into the mid lane. Who knows? Interesting. I mean, they always can. They can always check. Maybe they suspected a swap from Pepperdine uh, and they're trying to preempt that. Like, who knows? You know, five head. Five head Ramsey. I don't know. Like, we're, we're <laughs> only four heads. They're five heads. Like, we, we, can't, we can't even begin to... Uh, yeah. To imagine that the I'm here strats. trying to play 2D chess, and <laughs> someone out there is playing 10D chess. So we shall see. Yeah, nothing happened early. Just fan outs from both teams, trying to protect their jungles, make sure nobody gets invaded. Fiddle Six does get that free ward to protect his red buff. And I mean, the Akali is still top, so I'm not gonna switch the uh, the yeah, order and, and of the profiles yet. Showing top side making it yeah. well known that this lane swap has come out. I wonder if this is a comfort thing or if there's some Lots of uh, Scott? Yeah. Lots of poke coming out from the Akali here, but a good grasp hit from Scott there. 
hitting the slow onto the Akali as well. Yeah, this is not your typical tanks in the top lane wet noodle fight. You know, that's going to be a spicy aggressive top lane with Scott it's... really needing to play it well. Yeah, it's going to be aggressive to say the least, just like you said, but same for pretty much all of this game. It, there, There's not going to be a boring lane, I don't think. I, I, I absolutely agree. I don't think oh, we'll see any. Santo Massey going on to Biters there in the mid lane as well. Yeah, good. Good damage. Oh, dangerous trades going up here in the top side. But Windchill is there on that Hecarim, potentially First looking for the Akali. The, ta see. the taunt goes out. Will the kill be able to be landed on the side of Pepperdine? The flash comes out from Suez. Windchill is chasing. So, flash burn. Fox ghost, but is not able to get the kill. Yeah. Flash for ghost. That's a good trade on the side of Pepperdine, I think. It'll give some breathing room to Scott to show out this lane and maybe get a good back timing. TP used again, so no Summer's top lane for the Akali. A bit of a CS lead opening up here on the bot side for the for University of Victoria. Yeah, it's a little surprising actually. Ash is uh, supposed to kind of push in around in lane, so. Well played from the University of Victoria to, to not let that happen. Scott going very, very low in these trades. Has to use his E to get away there. The Fiddlesticks was hovering, so maybe Scott's this sixth sense. Fiddle the ability to get in and harass Windchill just a bit. TP going down the side of Pepperdine for getting the Shen back into the top lane. Little drive by, walk at you, gank from the fiddlesticks. Despite the uh, early action, still a pretty sleepy early game thus far, though of course we do have the scrappy little trade there yeah. in the mid lane. This game is just a lot of little trades adding up to, you know, flashes being blown, but no kills, no advantages thus far. Just the slightest gold lead opening up here for the University of Victoria based on the CS advantages in the various lanes, but it's so slight. Yeah, first dragon Tiny. now up, so I imagine we'll see either a gank into dragon or a little bit of a team fight around dragon. Scott obviously hoping to hit six before that dragon fight occurs, mm -hmm. as he will have the, the teleport advantage with his ultimate, given that both TPs are down. Important to notice as well that the Fiddlesticks did get that bottom scuttle crab, so he does have a little bit more vision control here in this bot side river, though the Hecarim is here potentially to go on to this aggressive Leona. Both flashes coming out from the bot side for the University so my, of Victoria. Can Pepperdine take this and translate it into a dragon? Fiddlesticks is on the other side of the map. It would be uncontestable, but do they know and are they willing to take that risk? It looks like the Hecarim is checking, or at least going in to maybe invade. No, getting the deep ward into yep. the bot side jungle and of uh, Vigoroso here on the Fiddlesticks. Unfortunately, sticks. the bot lane is back and perhaps rotating up, though maybe not. You gotta wonder if maybe that was Pepperdine's opportunity to get this dragon, but I completely understand not having that information of where the Fiddlesticks was not going for it. But, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. Caster now, Vision Winchell, is 2020. <laughs> Winchell is starting it up, though, so let's see. Fiddlesticks on his way, now on Vision, so they will know. No help there, and Winchill forced to back off. So that's about a minute and a half of time Winchill spent dropping a deep ward, not getting any invade gold because all the camps are down, starting the dragon and then backing off. Looks so. like leashing for the Fiddlesticks, but the bard Perhaps. is here. Smite battle. 
who will end up getting the dragon there. Blue team, Pepperdine, gets the dragon. Engaging here onto the side of University of Victoria. The Leona's a bit cut out here. Takes the bard tunnel to get away, but ultimately does go down. First blood over to Dragon King Hots on Pepperdine's bard. Oh, and Scott's it looks like deep. Scott is going to try to get this kill onto Vigoroso here. Will he be able to? It does not look like it, though. Vigoroso is so low. Pepperdine wants it so badly. He's trading off that tower aggro. Santo Massa well, uses his ultimate lay. to get out. Oh, man. Flashing to not go down to the uh, Jin E there. But, <laughs> but just, still, I mean, very, so very well nice. played on the side of Pepperdine. You see. Scott takes the aggro, gives Echo the time to drop his bubble. As soon as that goes down, Scott drops aggro, lets the Echo take the aggro, get his burst, ultimate away, and the dive is perfect. And just, I cannot and say- honestly, like, I just want to give like a little bit of a golf clap there to Pepperdine because, you know, this is some of the coordination that we've been really, really wanting to see from Pepperdine that's been a little bit hit or miss, but it was there in that fight, definitely. Yeah. And from the start, we said, both TPs down top lane. Shen has ultimate. Shen ultimates in. I mean, just so well done from the side of Pepperdine. Definitely. From a, for a small indie university, really well played. <laughs> Are private universities indie? Do, do they count? I'm uh, not sure they count. <laughs> but. I don't think you can have a, Mal uh, a Malibu campus and be considered indie. Yeah, yeah, probably not. Probably not. You know. Sorry, we're spoiled by our ocean views. You're just jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get my sunglasses. Ramsey throwing shade. Oh, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, man. All in good fun. All in good fun. For the for repaying the trash talk earlier in the chat. <laughs> Looks like... Uh, Rift Herald spawns, so that's likely the next objective, and Fiddlesticks is top lane, so Scott's in a bit of danger here. Fiddlesticks ult, and Scott just taunts away. That is a huge teamfight ultimate, and the first Fiddlesticks ultimate of the game, wasted, and well done. Well done, Surprise! Scott. It's like a surprise party where no one walks in the door. Exactly. So Leona E going down, gets the bard, layered CC with the Leona ultimate as well. A little bit of trouble here for Bobby Joe. Leona chasing. Hecarim is uh, keeping the gin tied up. <laughs> it looks like ultimately Bobby Joe is going to lose to that Ash there, but the Hecarim gets the kill onto the gin in the meantime. Yeah, I mean, you know, the kill going on the support, not the end of the world. Hecarim getting a kill is great for Pepperdine, make him a little bit you know, get him to his item spikes earlier, make him a little bit more tanky in these team fights. Yeah. So, also, probably a win for Pepperdine. Though and I know perhaps... in, in a lot of games, uh, there would be a lot of uh, flack for, uh, you know, the, the the support being able to secure that kill there. But really, there is no shame. Think about Leona, how much lockdown, how much CC, her W as well. Uh, you know, Bobby Joe having used a lot in that fight to try to save his support, you know. No shame there. A valiant end for Bobby Joe. Absolutely. Now, I didn't see it, but it looks like the Rift Herald perhaps went over to uh, University of Victoria while that team fight was happening bot lane. Uh oh, Bard face checking. Oh no. All the of the rooms here. Down. And Leona forced to flash away. We see the Rift Herald dropped in the top side. So perhaps first tower going over to Scott running University for of his Victoria. <laughs> so you can't count University of Victoria out. It's a good macro no, no, play. No, no. To take and the they Herald. have a, uh, a 1k and growing gold lead here. It does look yep. like the Rift Herald will get the charge off on the second tower. It is so not blow for blow thus far in this game. So even though Pepperdine has those early kills and that great tower dive, you know, the, the map control, the towers, all of that is going to matter so much when it comes to this later part of the game. Uh, University of Victoria definitely is in a good spot, to say the least. Yep. Taunt coming out from Scott here. Hecarim is there to follow up if things get aggressive with the Akali. The Leona stun goes down, or uh, 
slowed, I should say, on the ultimate goes down. Bobby Joe does manage to get the kill on the Jin during that fight. But ultimately goes down. The Gangplank ultimate was there as well. It looks like the Leona is getting aggressive trying to kill this Bard. Will Bard be able to get the kill back? No, the kill goes over to the Le Leona's W. Yeah, well, and maybe the Aftershock as well. So, oh, well true. played from Victoria. Now, that is a lot of ultimates committed. I mean, the GP will use there, so not totally lost on the side of Pepperdine, but if they, if University of Victoria gets a dragon here, that would be cream on their cake. The Ash W getting a lot of vision there. It looks like this dragon will ultimately stay up. All of Pepperdine seems to be here. Scott is being very helpful, goes down. The dragon does go over to Windchill here, securing with the smite. He will go down as well, though. Bard ultimate goes down to help Santa Massey get away. That was good on Pepperdine getting in there to get the dragon, but ultimately I think there was a little bit of a miscommunication between whether or not they were securing the drake first or going onto the side of University of Victoria. Absolutely. You saw that... Uh... Oh, no. The Leona E stun into Jin W, but Bard is here. Oh, the Leona stun on the ultimate goes down. The cleanse used on the side of the Ash to keep herself alive. Uh, the Bard in. gets in here, goes extremely low. The TP coming out from... Scott here, flash taunts onto the Jin. Beautiful. Will get this this kill. That was a beautiful play. Scott just feels some type of way about us not happy with the draft. It says I'm putting the team on my back today. Oh my goodness. Hey, hey, if if you know talking smack about Pepperdine's draft in between rounds causes plays like that to happen, you know, we we need that to was... smack talk it more often. <laughs> Scott feeling some type of way. That was beautiful flash. Oh, just catching the Jin at the very last pixel. Looks like a gank here in the top side. Yeah, and I was about to say something about maybe over aggression on that bard there, but it seems like, you know, Dragon King knew the damage numbers. He was confident. Scott said he was ready to come in on that TP, and it's just a good play. Yeah. I'm led to believe that there is a bit of a shot calling difference this game versus last. It seems like with the addition of Dragon King Hots, there's just a little bit more coordination from the side of Pepperdine. And I wonder if that voice in comms is contributing. We can't know for sure. We're, we're, we're not there, but it is looking pretty good. The team play this game is looking pretty good. Oh, Bard Ultimate goes down. Gets the Leona. She is caught out here. The TP goes down, as well as the Leona ultimate. Hecarim is stunned out here. GP ultimate goes down to provide some cover for the team. GP TP's in. Yeah, I mean, that's TP and GP ult burned versus just the Bartle. So in terms of cooldowns expended, win for Pepperdine. But can they capitalize on those cooldowns before they're back up? And yes, we're still seeing this uh, this gold lead on the side of University of Victoria, but unlike last game, Pepperdine is really doing well pay playing from that slight gold disadvantage. They're getting the objectives. While they're not currently getting towers, they're still doing a lot of team play on the map. So Pepperdine, I think, overall is playing much better this game. I think this next dragon fight is gonna be a big, crucial fight in this game. Pepperdine secures third Drake. I think they're in a great spot. On the other hand, if they overforce at the Drake and give the Drake over to the University of Victoria, I think they're going to be in a bit of trouble. So very excited to see how this next team fight plays out. As you can see, Leona already getting in there, dropping vision, sweeping wards, trying to create or just gain knowledge for their team uh, ahead of this next fight. Only, what, two wards in the whole bot side of the map for Pepperdine. So, you know, need to get the Hecarim and the Bard together to go in, drop some safe vision, and get out. So that way they're not operating blind. I am noticing, though, this match. It does seem like Pepperdine's vision control, like, while last game it was, you know, not, not like, bad or anything, it does seem to be a little bit better this game so far. A little bit more priority of provision on those objectives, but, you know. 
Yeah. You're still seeing a lot of vision control from the side of University of Victoria around this uh, upcoming Cloud Drake. Absolutely. And Pepperdine taking this Rift Herald, but Victoria on the way. Can they get out? Really important the Hecarim got out there without having to burn his ultimate, given that Dragon's coming up in about 40 seconds. Mm-hmm. You can definitely expect uh, Pepperdine to reset and be moving towards that Dragon at this point. Once again, though, Ramsey, phenomenal vision setup from the University of Victoria. I mean, mm -hmm. two wards deep in the red side jungle. They're now camping this bush. They're going to see the Hecarim walk across that ward. And if he gets picked out here... Oh, oh Bobby Joe in ash. trouble. Cleanse going down on the Ash. The Leona ultimate doesn't get anything. Bart ultimate goes down. The Woo! Ash arrow, arrow taking out Vigoroso there. Like that I is say. what you want to see. Dragon King Hot's getting aggressive. Great Bartle followed up with the Hecarim molt. And definitely the Ash Arrow. Oh no, Dragon King Hot's in a bad spot here. Jin coming out. Akali is running rampant in Pepperdine's team right now. Shen comes out, gets the taunt onto Gangplank but there, there but damage? it doesn't look like the follow-up is there. Scott's in a bit of a tough spot and goes down to the, the fourth shot from Jin here. Definitely, that was Scott getting a little bit aggressive, and they're not being good follow-up from the team because the Akali was zoning them out. Yeah. Unfortunately, just a little bit over-aggressive. Like you said, the Akali in a great spot. Now, Pepperdine attempting to take this mid-tower in exchange for the dragon. We'll see if they can get it. They can afford to give that dragon over. Not the, not the worst thing in the world to happen for Pepperdine here. True. However... Hecarim loves Cloud Soul, so not ideal. If an early Cloud Soul on a Hecarim is an absolute terrifying thing, it would have been fantastic for Pepperdine's uh, hope to win this game. Looks like things have settled a little bit after all that chaos. People just kind of clearing jungles, pushing waves. GP trying to knock down this turret on the bot side. Important here, people uh, are probably watching to get a little bit of a hint as to what's good in this uh, new meta with these new items. So just to highlight some of the mythics that are being played this game, it looks like we have a mortal shield bow on the Ash, as well as the uh, Divine Sepulcher, something like that, being played uh, on... Sunderer, I think. Sunderer, there we go. Different, uh, thinking of a different uh -oh. item. Oh, no. Bard ultimate goes down, but ultimately too late, and Fiddlesticks ultimate gets the kill on both. Yeah, them. once again, Pepperdine pushing up in lanes with no vision control in their side bushes. And when you got a Fiddlesticks, you have got to ward your flanks. I mean, he's so strong. Pepperdine oh. might get a return kill here onto the gangplank. Takes two from Pepperdine to get this kill here. He's gotten a bit of trouble here topside. I'm sure that University of Victoria saw two bot side and thought, you know what, we're going to take this opportunity to take the top tower and do this tower dive. Scott playing that very well, doesn't go down, is forced to flash. Great use of the stopwatch there on Vigoroso. Scott goes in to try to get the re-engage onto Vizoroko and this Akali. The shutdown goal goes over to Scott Shen. The Jin W goes down. Very interesting. The Fiddlesticks, you know, nearly backs, decides to stay, and immediately dies and hands over a boatload of shutdown gold. So, questionable play there from Vigoroso. Yeah, sometimes you just gotta leave your team to it. But to go briefly back to the items, you were right. It was the Divine Sunderer being played on both the Hecarim and the Gangplank here. As uh, we expected, Shirelia is for the Bard and Locket for the Leona. And the Sunfire uh, Aegis, something like that, mm -hmm. on yep, the uh, Shen. And then I don't know what that item is on both of the Akali and the Fiddlestick. Night Harvester. Night Harvester. Mm -hmm. And then. 25 movement speed after damaging a champion. Yeah. And then the. Um, it's not Hextech Proto Belt, but it's Hextech Proto Belt on the. Hextech Echo. Rocket Belt. Okay. Instead of protos, it's got rockets. <laughs> okay. And then, oh, and then uh, another one on the gin. A lethality, I think. 
Gladiator. Yeah, I think you build an eclipse. Yes. Yeah. Eclipse on the gym. Eclipse and Storm Razor, so really going for that uh, crit and uh, Omni Vamp. It really seems like with the items this patch, uh, Riot is going for lots of damage, lots of self healing in the forms of Omni Vamp. Not a lot of uh, support healing. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. As we see Echo jumping on the fiddlesticks in the river. His combo takes the fiddlesticks down to half health, has to flash out. Leona's in a bit of a tough spot. Hecarim ulti going down. Looks like Leona will ultimately be taken down by Pepperdine. The Jin has to Zonyas to secure his life and then flash away. Great little engage there from Pepperdine. Still 45 seconds until that next wind drake, so not quite. It, it's a little bit too much time for Pepperdine to immediately pivot that advantage over to the drake. Excuse me, Ramsey. I'm coughing myself here. No, no worries. TP on the bot side. Let's see if they can get. It doesn't look like they will be able to kill biters before Suez is there to help. The TP coming down from it looks like the Echo. Bobby Joe is here. It looks like Suez will get the kill onto Windchill before the rest of Pepperdine's team can get there. The Zonias goes down from Suez here. Wonderful place from this Akali to survive, but does ultimately go down to Bobby Joe. Vigoroso on the Fiddlesticks is there, though. Pepperdine is all so low, especially Bobby Joe here. It goes down, it looks like, to the drain of the Fiddlesticks. And unfortunately, this gives Dragon Priority over to the side of... Yeah, uh, this Uner Drake is up. This is not what Pepperdine needed. This is not what you wanted to see. I'm sure Pepperdine is thinking, oh, we can give this over. But, you know, this is the second Drake you've given over at this point. And the first two were, you know, hard fought. You know, Well, I should say the second one was hard fought to win. So... You know, you can't really, really afford too many more of these. Very much so. We do see the Collector picked up on the side of the Gangplank. That's the item I was talking about earlier with 5% health executes. Mm. But, you know, d despite the, the few mistakes we've seen on, on both sides uh, and, you know, the, the fact that, you know, this has been such a scrappy game, I think it's it's overall a, a much higher quality game than the first game we've seen thus far. That game was nothing to sniff at, but this game so far is, is really, really entertaining, really, really no, fun to watch. No, this has been a fantastic, scrappy game, back and forth, really, really well played from both sides. Oh, it looks like Scott's in a little bit of trouble here. Biter's chasing him down. The Hecarim is here to cover for Scott. Will they... Looks like they're going to re-engage on the Biter's here. It looks like Windchill will use his ultimate. And Good it looks like a... I can't quite tell if that was a kill donation onto Scott or if uh, it was just a kill secure. But it looks like Pepperdine's also caught out Clancy here on the Leona as well. But a lot of was committed and ultimately the Leona does not go down. The Fiddlesticks ult over the wall. Does not ultimately fear anyone from Pepperdine, but does this, put him in the bad position. This should looks be like Clancy for will uh, go down here to Hecarim. It looks like uh, University of Victoria was just kind of caught up all over the map there. The Akali is here. Santa Massey is there to... Chunking out the Akali crucially so she can't get in there and cause havoc in that small area. And very well played from Pepperdine. Yeah, very, very good. And honestly, it looks like this uh, this Echo might be the, the one thing that is really, really scary for Suez on this Akali right now. Um, 
Yeah, she's built, you know, some armor in the form of the Zanyas, but no magic resist whatsoever. But overall, very, very well played from Pepperdine, taking the opportunities to catch out University of Victoria where they can. And so, you know, you know, University of Victoria has been playing very, very well. I, I would say it's their game to lose, but when they make little mistakes like that, you definitely see the possibility of Pepperdine taking advantage of those mistakes and, and getting back into the game and making it their game to lose. Yeah, I would say at this point, Pepperdine now with a 300 gold lead, I think it's Pepperdine's game to lose. Yeah, they, they've made up the gold difference that, uh, you know, was opening up there in the mid-game for the University of Victoria, so... Uh, you know, I, it, it, I think what'll, what we see around this next Drake in this next minute and a half will really tell us about the flow of the game, whether or not that's going to be part for the course, and that's what we're going to see from Pepperdine and University of Victoria here on out, or if University of Victoria is going to say, no, that was just a fluke, uh, you know, we're, we're fine. Uh, so it, what we see in this next uh, now minute in, uh, in 15 seconds here will be pivotal. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Shen ulti will be up, Shen teleport will be up, Akali teleport will be up. So it looks like all globals will be available for the next fight. So very, very crucial fight from the side, or for both sides. Lots of uh, vision around here. Oh, Scott's in a bit of a pickle here. Scott to run away. To just blast count himself away. But Akali is here. Scott is, like, if you're looking at the mini map, Scott's not in a good spot right now. Okay, it looks like he will get away. Uh, Pepperdine is there trying to back him up a bit. And this is, you know, assuming Pepperdine can keep anyone from going down here, they're buying time for the Echo to split push on the top side. A uh, wind chill a little bit caught out here. The uh, ultimate does come out from the Jin. And wind chill does have to ultimate. ult away. Great ultimate there from Dragon King Hots to pretty much save his entire team. Yeah, that is fantastic ultimate from Dragon King Hots. Completely shuts down the engage. Buys time for the Echo to TP down. And now Pepperdine with the advantage. And now all ultimates for the side of University of Victoria are down. Every single yep. one. Though, the, the big Hecarim multi is also down. So Very, very true. Bard has to flash away here. Santa Massey goes in, he's Zonia's, he also has his ultimate as well, he does use it there, it looks like Plancy is going to go down, Jin gets the kill onto Santa Massey here, you hate to see it, but it looks like the Akali will go down here to Dragon King Hots, the ultimate comes out from Vigoroso there, ultimately for not, it looks like Pepperdine will get this dragon. Yeah, three for two and a dragon, that's a, that's a win for Pepperdine, now, you have to be careful, those gangplank barrels do chunk, and they're grouped up, but Dragon for Pepperdine, and once again... Doesn't even this... use the smite. Ugh, <laughs> my heart hurt. <sighs> we said it in champ select. Those key bard ultimates could make or break this game, and I think we saw Dragon King Hots there lands a crucial bard ultimate, disengages for his team, fight is won, well played. Good job, Pepperdine, there. It does feel like, uh, I mean, well, first of all, Pepperdine playing those fights very, very well, especially, uh, honestly, that Bard ultimate was just like, you know, wah. it was very, very good on the side of Pepperdine. Um, but also, it does feel like University of Victoria just isn't playing those fights as optimally as they could. Um, yeah, I agree. I, I, it doesn't seem like they're as comfortable with this comp or this style as they were in the last game. I will say, Suez on the Akali looks great. Um... Clancy on the Leona looks great. Honestly, everybody looks great. It just doesn't seem like they're synergizing as much as they did in in the first game. Yeah, well, I think the only you know, real big difference is Vigoroso just not having the same impact on this Fiddlesticks as, as last game. Mm-hmm. As you know, had on that That was really just in Pepperdine's face all the time, and this Fiddlesticks just has not, has, has not been as impactful. Bard ultimate Bard goes down and manages to get the Akali. Four people from Pepperdine are there. The Zonia is trying to help the Akali get away. She does dash. Well, well played to get out of there alive. Wincha wants the kill. Ultimately, does not get it, though. A lot of resources from Pepperdine there trying to shut down that Akali. 
Yeah, it's uh, it's unfortunate, but they get nothing. I mean, they get a Leona ult and, or Leona flash, and that's about it. A little bit of a death bush there on the side. Dragon King is a bit by himself here, but Santa Massey nearby. The old ultimate gets nothing there. Uh, Except ash. for the flash of yeah. the, the ash. That's in terms of nothing in terms spell. of a kill. That is a very important summoner to be down. Is it just me, or does it feel like everything's up faster? Yeah, the, the whole game is just... It just seems like everything is a little bit more fast-paced. Uh, you know, fights happen faster. It's just scrappy. It's, it, it feels a little bit like a different game. So, Because it's hard for me to know if that's... Oh, a little bit of a fight going on here. Scott and the Akali. Um, He's not really flexing this uh, gold lead. Just having himself a day. <laughs> it's not much on the Akali. He and the Akali are pretty much neck and neck, neck in and terms neck. of gold. But, um... I'm not sure if it's just how things are being played or if it's, you know, items in meta, but it does feel like this game is just flying by. I know that we're 33 minutes in, but it feels quick. Yeah, I absolutely agree, Ramsey. And I'll agree with the chat. I also love anime comebacks. <laughs> this feels like a comeback story here, no question. Looks like the Fiddlesticks lying in wait, maybe trying to pick the Echo up in that side lane. I'm surprised Pepper Knight isn't pushing to try to get this tier 2 tower in the mid lane. Oh, it looks like the minions picked it up on their own. Minion diff. <laughs> well, and we have to say, just in towers taken alone this game, Pepper Knight is, you know, super improved over the last. They got no towers in the last game and they've already gotten one two three four five in this game so already a huge step up in that regard definitely living by the creed never take a bar tunnel <laughs> looks like pepperdine rotating into the bot side to either pick the gp or perhaps set up some vision for this dragon that's spawning in a minute Pepperdine wants this Cloud Drake. They want this Cloud Soul. Windchill wants this Cloud Soul. That's what really Wind matters. Chill just finger hovering over that R button. Give me the opportunity to engage, he says. Oh, no. We're going to see a scrappy fight here. I bet ya. Pepperdine starting up this dragon, but Suez is a Kali is there. Pepperdine disengages, gets out of the Gangplank ultimate. Redemption coming out from the Bard here. Santa Massey has to use his ultimate to get away. The Bard ultimate gets three people set up into the Hecarim ult, just like you wanted to see. Victoria's a little bit split off here. Santa Massey's in a bad spot. Goes down to the Akali, but Bobby Joe does get the return kill onto Ooh, the Fiddlesticks frame. there. Oh my goodness, Suez is so low. Can you get him handy? Yes. Man. Will he get the kill onto I Carry You as well? I think Pepperdine turns, takes oh, the dragon. Look at how fast Hecarim was. <laughs> He's just lightning horse. Oh my well, goodness. Well played from Pepperdine. They start oh. the drink. They force University Victoria to come to them. They disengage, drop the Bartle, drop the Hecarim ult, take the fight, take the soul. I... I'm I'm gonna be optimistic. I'm gonna knock on wood, cast her curse. I think I think Pepperdine has this one. It's it's definitely looking good for them. If they can secure this Baron, I think they're in a great position. But I wouldn't count University of Victoria. No, out no, I'm not yet. counting they're... them out. I'm just saying, you know, gotta be the power of hope, you know. <laughs> please don't let the gin steal it, Pepperdine. Please. Okay, good. <laughs> Baron secured for Pepperdine. Oh, the Hecarim is so fast. <laughs> Just makes my life flash before my eyes. I think about my solo queue games playing a little tiny Sona as the Hecarim. Yeah. Just zoom. Turbo horsey running at you. <laughs> oh, can you imagine? 
pecker him with Shirelias. Was that what was making him go so fast before? Uh, it might very well be. I know the Bard has picked it up. I'm betting you, if, if we see a game three, if Pepperdine picks up this game, I bet that the Bard, uh, you know, ban goes down on the side. I, I, I would 100% agree with you, Ramsey. I think there's no way the Bard doesn't get banned. Is you know, and again, so much credit to Windchill this game. I mean, four bands thrown at him. He picks, or three bands thrown at him. He picks up this Hecarim, and he's just having himself a day. So, cannot give enough props to Windchill and to Scott as well. I mean, kind of silently just being this big frontliner, 6-2-10, and 10, really, you know, having himself a day as well. Though he is caught out a little bit here. Not a good spot to be if you are Scott here. It doesn't matter yeah. if you're level 18 oh, with full, caster almost full it. items or not. I'm sorry, Scott. <laughs> I know. It's like, all your fault, Cotty. Scott's going to come for you. I will take the, the tower in the mid lane, though. Oh, the Jin ultimate goes down. The flash comes out from Bobby Joe. Oh, the Akali nice, is here. Ash Disengage ult. Ash ult. Good on Pepperdine. They may have lost Scott in that little exchange, but. Yeah, I mean, hard, hard to say that it's 100% worth because there was a huge gold bounty on Scott, but cracking the base, you know, getting down that mid tower is a key step in winning this game. So not totally uh, an unacceptable trade. Fiddle forced to flash. Should say we're we're firmly, we are firmly in next game territory. Absolutely. And, and looking, you know, kind of taking stock of where we're at, the Jin is two level. Please. Yeah, Lakin. The Jin is two levels down on the Ash. I mean, this Jin has not had the impact you might have expected it to have this game, considering how strong that champion is right now. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that this Bard pick is just so good into it. I mean not being able to, to dodge out the ultimates and having his ult countered by the bard ult, so. I know we've said it, but this bard pickup has been just game changing for the side of Pepperdine. And we should note that I carry you, who looked so dominant on the Samira last game, is now two levels behind the enemy ADC, despite having a nearly 30 CS lead and an extra kill besides. Mm -hmm. I think Pepperdine's draft adaptations to take away that Samira was fantastic. I see chat throwing shout outs to Suze. Yeah, absolutely. Slippery as all. Oh, fight here in the jungle. Yeah, Slippery is uh, just so slippery in the sidelines on this Akali, really playing fights well. Oh, did we see that it's Suze? Is that officially how it's said? I think it's Suze. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's the way it was pronounced in the chat. I did not see. Trying to... Oh, Scott with the, the teleport. Ooh, <laughs> that payback hurt. for the bot lane. Oh man, oh, Pangoose, I I see your your copy pasta and I respect it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, Barn ultimate goes down. Ultimately causes the Ash arrow to miss onto the Leona ult there. Bard, ooh, it's not looking great for Pepperdine here. So many Big layered Hecarim ultimates. Will Hecarim be able to get something out of it? Vigoroso is very, very low there, but ultimately it looks like Scott's going to go for it, and he oh, might not get it here. Just living with a sliver of health. Echo perhaps re-engaging? No. So, little bit of a failed attempt there from the side of Pepperdine. So many some... ultimates down on all sides. Was that everyone? Almost everyone's ultimate. Yeah. I think everyone's. I think Fiddlesticks is already back up. <laughs> like I said, it seems like uh, 
the the night harvester is the one that gives all legendaries ability haste so i wonder if that ability haste is really coming through in terms of these uh ultimates here it might very well be now university of victoria starting up this elder dragon it looks like they'll be able to finish it can win she'll steal He's certainly gonna try. Oh, no, it doesn't make it. About a hundred, and the gin crit gets it. Mm. Nice try, nice try. I wonder if perhaps he could have, you know, gone for a little more aggressive uh, hacker molting into the pit to get a fear off, and maybe making his smite a little bit more, you know, safe. But. That would have guaranteed that he died not having the Hacker Molt to get out. So, yeah. Hard to say what the right play was. I think perhaps giving it over is a little bit smarter, but have to trust Winchill on that one. Yeah, but I definitely know Pepperdine now does not want one of those scrappy fights they've been having where everybody's been living with just a sliver of health because that. Yeah, Fire Truck ca Kid so. says it's Suez, which is what Suez. I've been saying. Okay, I was wrong. That could be wrong. I. Who knows this kid? He might not even know him. <laughs> Looks like this Baron's gonna go yeah. down for... Not sure if Pepperdine just didn't know, or they're, you know, just... I mean, I there's a little been... bit of vision up there on the top side, but not around that Baron. And yeah, it looks that's... like, uh, like Pepperdine, that's... I mean... Even if they knew it was going down with that Elder Dragon on the side of University of Victoria, we probably don't want them to have it anyway. Or yeah, want to I let mean, them, excuse me, have them anyway, just because that I think fight. that's just a, a misstep from Pepperdine, not, you know, kind of making sure that they always have vision on Baron. And with the Elder Dragon and now the Baron, this is a strong University of uh, Victoria. They're pushing down the mid lane. I think Pepperdine needs to kind of just give up this tower and hurdle for the next two minutes or so and hope that they you know can withstand this barren elder empowered team they're probably gonna lose this mid tower here i don't see pepperdine defending it probably gonna lose inhibitor too which is what pepperdine lost that fight up in the mid lane trying to get on the side of yeah. university of victoria and I, with these Baron empowered recalls, I don't know that there will be enough time for Scott to pick up that tower on the bot side. It looks like he's backing off. So, Ash Arrow misses. Oh, a beautiful Fiddlesticks ultimate. Windchill ults does manage to get the kill on a Vigoroso there, but not looking great for Pepperdine here. Bobby Joe doing as much as he can, as is Windchill, but ultimately. Santa Massey does pick up a kill on the backside. Everyone's so low. Looks like they're pushing in the mid lane here and both. You know, three for two, getting two Elder Dragons and two Barons off. If Pepperdine can hold here and not lose an inhibitor tower or an Nexus tower, I think that's perhaps worth. It looks like Windchill's gonna maybe get Clancy here. No, but the uh, the TP from Suez's Akali here gets the kill on the Hecarim. Looks like in a bit of a pickle here with Santo Massey. Gets the kill hey. onto both of them. Double Santo Massey, for Santo. forget best Kali Canada, best Echo in A here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really well played. I mean, I'll take, what is that, five for two, five for three, and getting Baron and Elder off all of them. Not, you know, that's that's definitely worth. Now, Inhibitor and two towers went over to the side of University of Victoria. So definitely... Look at all the meeps on the bar. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we are 46 minutes into this game, and we are 400 gold difference. That's it. So, oh, my whew. goodness. This and, is, like, this is at fun. this point, almost everyone's full build. Almost everyone's level 18. Yeah, everyone's shy of the supports having hit that level 18 so you know these the these late game team fights can go either way it's all about execution and coordination and yeah. i think the next team fight probably you know is game game breaking 
it looks like pretty much everyone's either completely done with items or on their last item and man we're once everybody's full build it just will come down to the the better team and the better champions you know absolutely I do want to point out an Infinity Edge picked up here for this Gangplank, so really going for those barrel crits. Looks like Pepperdine trying to pick the Akali here on the top side. Though that has not worked out for them traditionally in this game. Pepperdine setting up some vision for the next Elder here in about 20 seconds. Does look like pretty much all of uh, University of Victoria will be able to get the back off so that they can set up for this Drake. Now, we do know that the bot lane pushing very heavily for... Oh, Bardo goes out. Finds no one. That's a big team fight ability down. Yeah, I'm sure Pepperdine's going to wish that they had it here in just a little bit. Leona stun comes down onto Dragon King Hots. Oh, Scott is Scott there with the double a taunt. Animal. A monster there. Gets rooted by the Jin, does get the kill onto the Leona, and then Santa Massey and Windchill are there just wreaking havoc on the bot, oh. bot line here. Bobby Cho flashes over to get this kill onto the triple kill for Bobby Cho, just doing what Ashes do when they're full build at level and 18. With minute long death timers, I would imagine Pepperdine closes this out. Yeah, they, I imagine opting, that's game. Right, they're opting not to take the Elder Dragon, which makes me think they're gonna push for the win. I mean, what a crazy, crazy team fight there. After having such a scary run at their own Nexus earlier, you know, you gotta look at University of Victoria and think, did you, did you get a little cocky? Just a I little wanted thing? silver scrapes, and we're getting silver scrapes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Well, good job though to both teams. Like, com oh, to be well, honest, that was such a good game. But ultimately, Pepperdine just did it better. I. I... We said for the start that would be a scrappy, fun game, and that was a scrappy, fun game. Uh, just so, I mean, the Akali in the top lane just dodging and ducking and diving and unkillable, and then those Bartles into the Hecaromolts. I mean, whew. Give me, give me five games of that, Rams. <laughs> oh, man. Well, you'll have one more because this is the tiebreaker. This is a best of three. We get right? one more game. Oh, I mean, they could run it back. Just run it back, folks. I want oh, that again. My goodness. I don't think we'll get it, though. I, I think I think 100% we're going to see a Bard ban. I, that Bard was so clutch in so many ways. You know, I wouldn't be But surprised. the Shen, too. Scott took that Shen, repeatedly got pivotal taunts oh, in those fights. Those just... beautiful flash taunts on the two people. I, I mean, just, oh. oh. We're awesome. just, <laughs> we awesome. wax poetic, but mm, <laughs> it was good. But again, clean play from the side of University of Victoria. Generally, just macro and micro, it just didn't work out that time, probably because it didn't seem like... The synergy was there like it was when they were playing with that Vala Bear. Yeah. I think this Fiddle Six, I could see what the strategy was. I can see why, but it just didn't play out. I mean, just didn't quite have that same front line disruption. The ultimates were good, but they just didn't quite do as no enough. Mm-hmm. And I, I think wonder... part of it is Pepperdine did just know, you just got to shut down the Akali. You just got to... Gotta do I that. Mean, they then... spent so many resources trying to, to catch out that Akali. And, you know, props to, uh, let, me, let me try to get this right, Suez. Yeah. Did I get it right? Suez. For just being slippery. I mean, really well played. But in the end, with that play, like, I think if Suez hadn't gotten a little bit of aggressive there, hadn't disrespected Santo Masi a little bit, that could have been <laughs> the end for University yeah, of Victoria. No. They Santo Masi coming up clutch. Late game anime hero plot armor 
<laughs> there at the end. <laughs> but we'll have to see. I do think both teams played very, very well. I think uh, University of Victoria, it just didn't feel quite as good that game, but still played very, very well. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. I think this game three is going to be awesome. I'm really excited to see what adaptations are. I wonder if Pepperdine will ban the Akali. I mean, it's clearly a comfort pick, and, and they're really good on it. So I wonder if that's an adaptation they decide to make. You know, I, I... We're getting into the lobby again. We're probably going to do another pro draft, I assume. Don't yeah, think that'll would, change up so. for, for game three. I, oof, if you would mind when you get that link, putting it in our chat so I can put Absolutely. it on the screen. For all the lovely viewers. I, oh man, I'm trying, I'm trying to five brain this, this, this draft. And I just, there's so many things. If Pepperdine has blue side again, I would imagine that first pick hacker up, assuming Bard isn't banned, right? Because they just synergize so well together. As far as the bans are concerned, I mean, Pepperdine seems like they hit it right on the nose. They, they, they got rid of the Samira. That was that seemed like a huge... You know, the Jin didn't look nearly as good as that Samira did. That Samira was, was nasty, and the Jin didn't have a whole lot of impact in that game. So, you know, I think taking, again, taking away that Samira is... Uh, okay, looks like draft has started. Oh, it doesn't look Not like we got in time seeing... to do that link. Yeah. I asked for it. Let's see if they give it oh, to let's us. Let's see if we get it. Oh. Ah, uh, thank you. Do you need me to send it to you? Or yes, you... please. Uh, if yep. I if I click it, it'll yep, yep, yep. mess everything up. There you go. All right, has not started yet. We are in time, Ramsey. Thank you. Boom, I am putting it up on the screen. All right, so it looks like for the first time this series, UV is on blue side, which means they will have first pick, and thus that hacker arm could be key in this match. Now we see the same bands coming out thus Go far. Go lightning from... quick. Right, yeah. And Almost the shed band. <laughs> Scott just earning it. Well done, mate. Okay, Hecker left they, up. Did they gentlemen's agreement to not take longer than two seconds on any band? <laughs> <laughs> and like we said, first pick Hecker. That is terrifying. So what does Pepperdine have in store? We'll have to see. Do so they... fast. I'm like, where's the pick? <laughs> <laughs> Do they do they try to to snatch that uh that bard? I I would. I mean, it, I guarantee you, if they don't pick support first round, that bard is gonna get banned in the second round. Now, Orn for Scott, I like this. Back on comfort for him. Without the Samira to and the Yasuo to throw out those uh, wind wall type abilities. It looks like a... A Lilia. Interesting. Interesting. Looks like chat is saying that we don't know about the super sleeper pick on Suez here. I mean, oh, we have we the OP.GG. I, I, I wonder. I wonder if that's the Renekton or the Talon. I've seen some of those spicy things up in the top side. We'll have to see. But no, we probably don't have the information, and maybe we're not ready. But you know, we'll uh, see. Set picked up in the top side, or could theoretically be a jungle set with the top lane Hecarim. Yeah, never know. Uh, probably not, because you've seen Hecarim <laughs> on Vigoroso, right? So yeah, it's yeah. <sighs> oh, I'm so excited for this game. You just yawned. I did. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh man, a Sivir! Interesting. Sipper. Interesting. Huh. That pretty strong into the Lilia can block the ultimate. So and Sivir R, speedy, Whoa. speedy team. 
Fast Hecarim. Oh boy. We're gonna be in for some rundowns, folks. Especially if whoever plays support picks up the Shirelia this game, then mm, speed, speed demon vain on the side of Pepperdine. Huh. I Bobby Joe putting on his big boy backpack to carry today. You know, Vane is really susceptible to Hecarim, you know, charging in and knocking her around. So, again, we've said it all series long. Positioning, positioning, positioning for Bobby Joe. Interesting. A Nautilus band coming out from Pepperdine instead of the Leona that we've seen thus far. Yeah. Though not surprising. Just fills a similar role and is a favorite pick from the support on the University of Victoria. Jana, Jana band. band. And I wonder if we'll see the Bard band next to that? I mean, I would be surprised if we didn't see a Bard band. But, I mean, looking at the team so far from Pepperdine, I'm not sure that the Bard is the best yeah, fit. I, I'm actually going to agree with you. I don't know that it fits the team comp nearly as well as the last one. And a Morgana. Morgana. Not surprising, actually. That really Sw good Sw in the set. Swain, Swain Sport? Swain Sport? Swain Sport? Swain Sport? We know Dragon I, King I, Hots I plays it. I would, yeah, I would have a field day. That'd be awesome. I, I don't think we'll see that come out. Not particularly good. Uh, he wants to be running down people, not so much having the Hecarim mm, and the, the run at him. So, yeah, that seems, you know, the Hecarim dives in, gets a big ol', fears the vein, and then Thresh just lancers her over a wall, and thanks. <laughs> so, let's see what we have here. Alistar, yep. Combos very well with the Hecarim. Can knock up anyone feared or go in and get a knock up to set up the Hecarim ult. Makes sense. And what is the mid lane pick? Or is the set mid lane and we're waiting on uh, Suez's top lane? Will he take the Akali again? We'll have to see. It's up. It's, up. it's open. All right. Pepperdine is... No, Zoe. Oh, Zoe. Okay. But will that be Zoe on Suez or Zoe on Biters? Because we both we seen them both playing in the mid lane right, today. Yeah. I I would imagine. Well, Biters played the set in the first game, so perhaps he'll go into the top side. This would be interesting. Twisted fate here for Santo Massey. All right, so really playing the TP into the bot side, set up this vein to get rolling. However, Sivir Spell Shield particularly good into gold cards. So, mm -hmm. I, you know, that's we're gonna have to see. Yeah, also, we're certainly going to have to see how that Zoe, all plays out. It, you know, it's very easy for Zoe to sleep Twisted Fate when he's ulting. I mean, she just throws the bubble at him, and he falls asleep. So, we'll see. This is, again, this is another skill execution matchup from these two teams, and I'm very excited. Just uh, on the surface level, uh, do you think that one team has the advantage coming out of draft? Training. Um, yeah, I, I'm gonna... I'm going to give UV the advantage in this draft. I mean, we've seen how impactful this Hecarim can be uh, combined with the Alistar in the set. I mean, this is a big run at you comp, kind of similar to their first game where they bring in a run at you comp. Except this time they have a to speed you up and they have the Hecarim. So, so yeah, I, I I would give the advantage to you, uh, University of Victoria. I mean, this is a, it's a scary looking comp in their side. On the other hand, you know, the Twisted Fate can just ult away. I mean, he can make, you know, 2v2s and 3v3s into unfavorable matchups. So I think Pepperdine's comp has more outplay potential, more skill cap potential. But I think UV's uh, is much easier to execute on. Their, their strategy of run at you with the Sibrel, with the Settle, with the Alistar and the Hecker. I think that's a lot of, it's a lot easier to execute but the skill ceiling isn't quite as high. So it's just a matter of positioning and macro. And that is the Zoe on uh, on Suez. 
I wonder if that's the spice chat was talking about. Ah, uh, I see sleeper pick was our hint because she sleeps people. As you wish. Oh. Clever chat, clever. Ha, gotcha. Ha ha ha. So funny. Your worst decisions will haunt you. Whew. By the way, love the hype, but this is a PG-13 chat, so just keep that in mind when you're typing. All right. <laughs> we see all there, guys. <laughs> so. Whew. I am very, very excited for this game. I mean, that last game was such a banger. This, this, I hope this game lives up to it. I think it will. I am very excited. I don't think we've seen Bobby Joe's vein yet this season. I mean, I'm excited to see what he can do on this hyper carry in the bot lane. I mean, vein is maybe the most like skill based hyper carry in the game. I mean, I'm trying to think of like Yasuo, also very similar dash mobility, damage output champion, but. You know, this is, and it looks like the team is is playing to set up Bobby Joe with the Lilia to sleep people, the Orn to be a front line, the Thresh to peel and save Bobby Joe, and and the TF to gold card and lock people down. So, very interested to see that. Now on the other side, we're seeing again this set in the mid lane. They can swap still, keep that in mind. But set in the mid lane, I wonder how that matches into into Twisted Fate. I mean, set. I've played some set mid. And, and range matchups are, are not I, fun. I expect that it's set into the Orn and Zoe mid, considering that that's, uh, they did a switch like that in the first game. Uh, Suez went with the Akali mid lane into the Kiana. Yeah. So I, I don't expect that it's Zoe top lane. I, I fully expect that it is uh, Zoe mid set top into the Orn, especially because that's just a rollback of what we've seen earlier today. Oh, we did. We saw the GP mid lane last game, so I'm not going to count it out just yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. N not counting it out, but I do think in all likelihood yeah, it's probably I, I, that I'm one. with you, Ramsey. I, I don't think Set wants to play into TF. He's going to get shoved in. He's going to get poked out. He's not going to be effective. Whereas into the Orn, it's much, much easier. Not uh, not an easy matchup, but an easier matchup. Yeah. But again, you want that Zoe. Yeah, you want the Zoe to be able to at least try to match the TF roams. I, I yeah. think... I think a lot of this early mid game transition is going to come down to how effective can Santo Masi be on this TF? Can he get those ults impactfully into side lanes, set up his team for success? I think that's going to be a lot of what kind of dictates, you know, as we enter the mid game, you know, who's going to be having an advantage. Yeah, and and I I'm a little bit scared for Pepperdine to see Suez on uh, this. Zoe just because we've seen how mechanically he was able to take advantage of pretty much every good thing about Akali so if he can do the same thing on Zoe that'll make that a very very scary Zoe especially with how freely he can use summoner spells and the sleepy trouble bubble with his R it's just gonna be it's gonna be scary to say the least but in losing the Shen Pepperdine compensated with the TF so that added mobility so if Pepperdine can keep up that synergy and that team fight strength that they had from the previous game that can, you know, because they had that comfort pit Akali and were able to be successful just with that added map pressure. So if Pepperdine can keep that on the TF, then potentially they mitigate some of that danger. But it'll certainly be uh, an interesting matchup to say the least. Absolutely. Wow. Chad is really loving this uh, Zoe pick. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're so excited. All I'm right, sure. Well. I'm sure they're just happy that they uh, got one over on us with their little hint. Ha, uh, was... Little hint. Clever. <laughs> well done. Uh, I'll, I'll admit it. <laughs> we'll admit. We'll admit. Uh, I, I am very excited to see Suez on this. On this is Zoe. It's it's going to be very interesting. I am actually curious. Did Mikhail's Crucible get the axe in this new patch? Or is I think it still so. an item? I don't you think it's still an item. Chat. I... Chat. Resources chat. <laughs> That's me... the great thing of not being pro casters with like with uh, like a whole production team. Instead of having people whisper it in our ears, we'll just the chat will tell us. Let's see. We've been officially dubbed pepperoni. 
Sure. Oh. I'll okay. I'll allow us to be called the best pizza topping. Oh, Ramsey, I miss pizza. Lactose intolerance is a brutal, brutal thing. Oof. Well, I've given up pepperoni for the most part because I no longer eat red meat, but... Oh, you've made a wrong decision, I understand. I, I mean, it's it's a health decision, I guess I mean, it's even, wrong. Even the Siver here rocking the pineapple and ham Siver delivery, pizza delivery skin. <laughs> well, there you go. So, I, you know, assuming Mikhail's Crucible is an item that still exists, I actually wouldn't... I doubt it will be picked up, but I wouldn't be surprised if it were, considering the amount of CC here. Now, it looks like we will have the Zoe in the mid lane, with the set up there in the top side. Once again, we're seeing nothing crazy in the early levels here, just everyone fanning out. Lil Lamb's trying to tell us that uh, Suez's name is pronounced seaweed, and I'm not entirely sure that's true. <laughs> I think they might be trying to pull uh, one over yeah, on us. Yeah, I think, I think sea whale. I like sea whale. <laughs> sea whale. Sea whale. The S is uh, silent. <laughs> All right. Looks like Pepperdine very confident. They know that there is a ward on raptors. Zowie. <laughs> uh, interesting to see. Oh, Zoe. Zoe's just getting a ward. Not gonna try to steal that blue buff, doesn't look like. Sometimes you see Lilia start with the. Uh, oh, 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 oh! Gets it. I think. I think. I think Windchill got oh, it. Oh, boy. That was terrifying. <laughs> I was worried. Yeah. Now, that is. A gamble that doesn't pay off for the Zoe. So the Zoe is now very much down on XP and lane pressure. And started E instead of Q, which is essential for those early uh, wave clears. Very much so. Let's see if Santa Massey can punish. Huh, angry Cow doesn't quite get the dash in, just slams the ground. It looks like nothing crazy or special in the form of summer Headbutt spells. In the bot lane. Uh oh. Ooh, hook onto the Thresh Q. Into the E. Nice. Bobby uh -oh. Joe getting carry very, very low. The ignite goes down from the Thresh. Does not look like they'll end up getting the kill, but I carry you's gotta be feeling real nervous. Yeah, it's Siver should have the advantage in this lane. Meanwhile, Scott continues to bully. Scott angry! We need to <laughs> criticize Scott more so we get I angry, know, right? Scott. <laughs> I see Italians for Suez in the chat. Ah, certo, certo. Ciao. Uh, That's all I know. <laughs> oh, no. Uh -oh. Dragon King Hots is Ooh. caught out here, and First Blood goes over to the Hecarim. I mean, we saw how impactful that Hecarim was in the last game, and just... <laughs> Yeah, just terrifying on, on this new patch. Oh. I'm getting all sorts of strange information about this name, uh, Suez or Suez or however you say it, but <laughs> maybe it is French for seaweed, who knows? Ooh, the headbutt coming out here from the Alistar. A lot of aggression coming out here. If that Thresh Q had landed, that would have been very, very bad for the side of oh, University of Victoria. But Windchill gets the kill up on the set in the top lane. Yeah, very good setup from Scott there. Layering CC very well. Headbutt coming over again from the Alistar here. The big chunks from the third hit of the vein coming out. Fortunately, a little anti-synergy there. Dragon King Hots flying the Alistar away and then just ever so slightly missing the hook due to distance. Deep wards coming out from University of Victoria. Making sure they have that information. Oh. 
It's always confused me that uh, Thresh's chain is counted as a uh, ranged attack, but makes sense. It feels like it should be melee, though. It just, yeah. it, with how it feels. Yeah, I understand. I mean, yeah, that's, that's, uh, I hadn't, I've thought about it, but I never thought about it in those terms. It's interesting. It, it is a melee attack in that it's a weapon, not a projectile being thrown, but it also is, like, kind of being thrown out there, so. Yeah. Uh, it looks like University of Victoria rotating here to this dragon. I'm gonna try to perhaps pick up an early drake for them. I don't think Pepperdine will be in a position to contest, so first dragon over to University of Victoria. Oh, true. I forgot to switch seaweed and the set, as they go to say. There we go. Fixed it. Fixed it, chat. Oh, oh, a lot going down the here lane. in the top side. TP, TP coming, coming out from the orange, it seems. It oh. looks like it got canceled by the set. E. But it was enough to make uh, Uvic slow down. More yeah, aggression no. coming out here. Hecarob rotating up into the mid lane now, perhaps trying to secure the scuttle and then counter gank the Lilia. Ooh, the Lilia's six goes down. Manages to oh, Fantastic get the kill CC onto... Sans amassing holding his gold card until the Lilia's sleep is almost done to just perfectly extend that CC duration. Well played for Pepperdine. I love the debate going on in the chat, chat as to like what this name actually is and what it means. <laughs> it's it's one of the great wonders of the world, Ramsey. We may never know. We may never know. Does anyone know what the name Dragon King is referring to? Hex Flash out here from the Alistar doesn't really get anything though, aside yeah, from Lantern. Well, well played there. Flying the Alistar way and then uh, lancering the vein into safety. Do you know what the uh, what Dragon King Hots is a reference to? Oh, uh, I think it has something to do with Heroes of the Storm, but I'm not entirely yes, sure. Yes, it does indeed. Uh -huh. Dragon uh -huh. King used to be Heroes of the Storm before he became a League of Legends refugee. That's right. Back when they shut down that island. Yep. <sighs> Looks like perhaps a gank here in the mid lane. Ooh, Drowsy comes uh -oh. out onto that's not Dragon good. King. Now he's in a bad spot. Yeah, that's nowhere to go. Definitely did not want to watch head first into... Yeah. One of the downsides of playing Thresh is... You do CC yourself when you throw that hook out, so you're very vulnerable to counter CC. Still a bit of a gold lead here for Pepperdine, but we saw that last game with uh, University of Victoria, so we know it's easy to come back from. I think a lot of that gold lead is currently resting on Windchill, who has two kills and a 20 CS yeah. lead in the jungle. So, But you definitely don't want that money on Windchill if you're University of Victoria. Absolutely not. If the sooner that this Oh, Lilia, no. Uh -oh. The sleep comes down. Hecarim. That was just good play from the University yep. of Victoria there. Chat told us that uh, Suez had this spicy pocket pick, and it looks like it's pretty nasty. Chat seems to only care about seaweed. How dare. 
Uh, well, Good with it's sushi. not our fault that their palate is so unrefined and they need so much salt in their meal. Makes sense, makes sense. Uh-oh, Scott's in a little bit of trouble here. Speedy punches coming out from the set. Interesting to see the set picking up a coal. I'm expecting this just to be a heavy farm lane. Calm down a fair bit, but we do have a Mountain Drake up here in just five seconds in this game. Yeah. And Hecarim is here. I'm sure Pepperdine feels the pressure. It's going to hopefully back off slightly going to meet their Lilia. They see yeah, Hecarim. They know hovering. Hecarim is here. This is, this is a crucial fight here in this early game. TP from the set coming in. Uvic trying to make a play here. Hecarim is oh, very deep. Vigoroso, very, very low. Ultimately goes down to the vein oh. there, but all of Pepperdine is extremely low. And that set ultimate just does work. So for the much side of you, damage. Whew. Once again, we see just how impactful this Hecarim can be. I carry you. Will ultimately oh. die and executes for tower. Uses the Zonias to make sure that the TF cards don't land, which was just extreme big brain, to be yeah, completely that was honest. Very, very clever. Very well done from I carry you there. Uvic definitely decided that they were going to uh, try hard this game, and try hard they shall. Not that they weren't trying in previous games. They obviously were, but this time they're pulling no, out all of the moves. No, it seems like Uvic has definitely, you know, perhaps realized they might have been a tad overconfident in the last game and are really buckling down and, and playing this early game very, very well. And that is already Landry's anguish on the Lilia there. Yeah, that's, you know, this Lilia is going to start chunking and dealing some serious damage over time. Ricktail dropped in the mid lane. Get a little bit of gold onto the TF and the Lilia there. And a bit more uh, map control here sooner if they can get that uh, that tower. Mm -hmm. Now it looks like we are seeing the lane swap from Seaweed and Bitters. So, oh, perhaps they're swapping back again. Interesting. Figueroso invading, or not invading, whoops, they are blue side this time. Whoops, they were blue side twice, I got confused. Oh, the uh -oh. headbutt coming out into the E from the Thresh there. A lot of damage coming out from the Sivir onto Dragon King Hots. Ludens picked up here for the Zoe, and interestingly, a rocket belt picked up for the TF. I wonder if that's a Santo Massey favorite or if I just haven't played TF in a long time. We'll have to see. Oh, Lilia is here, as is Scott. Her ultimate can go down. Scott gets the Orn ultimate as well. The re-engage coming in from Hecarim, but the Lilia ultimately does get the kill. Biters is in a bit of a bad spot, trying to get the kill onto Santo Massey here. Ultimately, that kill does go over to Suez. I believe you mean Seaweed the Hungarian Whale? Yes, Seaweed the Hungarian Whale. Seems like ultimately it's going to be a one-for-one one there in the top side. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, University of Victoria getting huge chunks of damage onto this bot tower after forcing out Bobby Joe. those asking if this is Valorant and what game this is, I will very helpfully tell you what you do not seem to know. This is League of Legends. A 5v5 MOBA. 
uh, best described as big ol' capture the flag, where yes. the flag is the other player's base. One might even call it a fancy uh, tower defense game. Uh huh. With lots of colors and abilities, and big dragons and giant purple worms. Soon uh -oh. to be. Oh no, Bobby Joe, a bit cut out here. Oh, Condemns and stuns condemn. away the the Hecarim. The TFLT Twisted coming Fate out. could be coming down. Dragon King Hots is going to go down here, but the Twisted Fate is there with the gold card. Scott's there as well. Gold card does come out. Oh, Vigoroso goes very, very low. Sleepy Trouble Bubble onto the TF. The Zoe Q hits a minion. Oh, Orn Ultimate goes down. And man, University of Victoria, all of their players are so low, but will anybody actually die? Oh, man, Bobby really Joe does get the kill onto. Although Santa Massey does yeah. fall on the exchange. Scrappy fights, everyone's so low. One you good Zoe have Q. to wonder if perhaps a Caitlyn, maybe, or or an Ash would have been oh, able no. to. Oh no, Scott go. is caught out there by the Zoe Sleepy Trouble Bubble. But Bobby Joe gets the kill on the Alistair in return. Yeah. Oh, oh. no, but the Suez the... gets the return kill even. Yeah. The Slovakian uh, polar bear really doing work down there in the bottom. Yeah. I'm sorry, guys. Suez. <laughs> My bad. Sorry. Chat, check. I'm confused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So much going down in the mid lane for University of Victoria. We really saw that being some of the key to their success in the first game, that early mid lane pressure. And now with the Cloud Drake coming up and two dragons already to their name. Pepperdine does not want to let University of Victoria get on this soul point, but they're not really in the position to contest in time. Absolutely, yeah, this is Dragon for sure going over. Another Cloud Soul with a Hecarim in the game. Uh, you know, this this game is beginning to fall apart here for Pepperdine. I believe Santa Masi has only used his TFL once into that bot lane, and I just, you know, again, I, I think this, this Hecarim is just such a strong pick really dictating the pace of these games. Oh, I do owe a little bit of an apology to Sam RC one in the chat when they asked what game is this? They meant like game three. So yes, it is game three. Thank you chat for letting them know. <laughs> to be fair, Sam, you did ask what game is this right after someone asked, this isn't Valorant? <laughs> so in context, I thought you were just jumping in on that joke. So far, Pepperdine's got to be feeling the pressure in this game. A lot of uh, a lot of danger. Yeah, they they're gonna have to play this kind of on a razor's edge. <laughs> the uh, the control board goes down, and the, the control board gets taken. <laughs> Chat, I I know you're all cheering at home for Vision going down. Things have kind of settled here for a little bit. 2k gold lead for University of Victoria. Perhaps thinking about diving the TF in the Thresh? Oh, Bobby but Joe's Bobby here. Joe's Can there. he turn it the does fight? does look like Santa going to go down, though. The Drowsy comes down from Lilia, goes down onto the Alistar. A lot of damage going down onto Bobby Joe. And it does look like seaweed Hungarian hippo whale is there. Yeah, unfortunately, just... Oh. oh. Nice. Oh, Flying. tries to... Ooh, look, no. but just not enough. No, no, Pepperdine, no. You can't let this person do this to you. Yeah, it's this game beginning to slip away from Pepperdine here. It's a bit unfortunate. They played so well last game. 
part of it is, like you said, there did seem to be a little bit of advantage going over to University of Victoria in the draft. Not dramatically, not in a crazy way. Uh, potentially Clancy in a bit of trouble here as Santo Massey is here. The Orn Ultimate is going to go down to secure the kill onto the Alistar, which is interesting, but, you know, a kill's a kill. Looks like Orn's having uh, burgers for lunch. <laughs> no. <laughs> Obviously, Orn has not committed to a red meat free diet like I have. <laughs> oh no. A lot of damage going down there in the mid lane. So, starting to think about how Pepperdine comes back into this game. Certainly, they can't let the Cloud Drake go over to. Right, that, that is Ubik. a big must. But on the other hand, how do they contest it? I mean, this Hecarim is so big. He's got seven kills. Wait, I blinked and he had seven kills. My gosh. Exactly. I mean, I don't know how Pepperdine can can face check or contest a dragon with his Hecarim being as big and terrifying as he is. Now, fortunately, Scott does have TP, so he can back and you know go topside if he wants to and still be able to join the fight but yeah, this is not looking good for pepperdine the little lamb in the chat pointing out that uh seaweed was in fact behind at level one and has you know come back very well now has a two level lead over sanso massey so playing this game very very well despite putting himself behind Pepperdine is trying to angle around this Drake that's yeah. coming up here in 30 seconds. Twisted Fate's trying ultimate. Trying to find a, a pick here prior to. They are going to get that tower, which is you know, some gold in their pockets. Or an ultimate goes down. Doesn't look like it hits anyone. The TP comes down from Biters on the set. Does get the ultimate onto the wind chill, but... Ufix split off a bit. Vigoroso gets stunned by the gold card here, gets condemned into the wall, and ultimately goes down to Bobby Joe. And the first fight of the... Clancy the gets stunned over. here. Very well played from Pepperdine. Splitting off that Hecarim, letting the vein 1v1 him with some support, and Pepperdine gets the dragon. That's really what we've seen from University of Victoria. They The only time when they don't look great is when they get split up in these fights. And Pepperdine... Uh, you know, has yeah, somehow been managing to do it. Yeah, they've, they've succeeded in a couple key fights by splitting off certain members and then, you know, creating an advantage for themselves. Man, that moment when the UVic people in the chat are more angry about uh, our, our diet and health choices than the way <laughs> their team is playing feels bad, am I right? No, no, no. But University of Victoria is playing these fights very, very well but they're just not able to maximize when they are split off in that way. It didn't seem like uh, the Hungarian Hippo Whale was able to get the value that he could off of this Zoe because of kind of how everywhere the team was. Mm -hmm. Oh, Alistar flashing in. Angry Cow. <laughs> kind of just headbutts go around move. it. <laughs> I will say, I'm a little disappointed with Clancy because no cowbell this game. And if you're going to play Alistar, you should be cowbelling. Oh, oh, Lily a bit caught out, has to flash away. Speedy Hecarim here, but Fast Scott Hecarim. is there to help uh, make sure Lilia does not go down. Super speedy Hecarim. All right, Cody. Why don't we say we are never going to refer to uh, to the mid lane player for you, Vic, as any name that makes sense for the rest of uh, the game? Yes. I mean, why? How could we? It's he, the <laughs> mid lane player is a seven thousand year old Romanian bear hunter. Like, <laughs> apparently, God among men. Apparently, like who needs Chuck Norris when you when you've got this uh, Romanian bear hunter from Slovakia? You know. Right. Ooh, backing off a bit as the Twisted Fate ultimate comes down. The little yeah, good job yellow from Santa Massey eye. just to check out, you know, spot out that attempted Baron sneak. Uh 
Oh, Hecarim is there. Bobby Joe in a bit of uh -oh. trouble gets caught out. And that should be goes down. Baron for. Well, Except no, they're going to continue to on. The sleep comes down from Lilia for the disengage. Yeah, I don't know how Pepperdine can test this. Can real question is can Windchill once again be a hero? Can they be the hero Pepperdine needs? It looks like Pepperdine will just give over this Baron, not try to force and make a steal. Chat thinks we're mad. <laughs> <laughs> we're just messing no, around, all, guys. All fun and games. All fun and games. We do see that the. Slovakian Bear Hunter has opened up about a almost 2k gold lead over Sanso Massey in the mid lane. So a lot of this gold lead coming from that. And then despite having seven kills, only about 100 gold, uh, in fact, actually now 200 gold down uh, in compared to Windchill. So Hecarim not actually as terrifying, for Windchill at least, as he might seem on the surface. But honestly, ooh, Bobby Joe not in a good spot. Neither is Dragon King. Bobby Joe's gonna get cut out again by the Hecarim here, as will Dragon King Hots. You just gotta imagine they did not run away fast enough, and this leaves the, the mid lane completely vulnerable from the side of Pepperdine. Yeah, this could be game here, Ramsey. Be very difficult for Te Pepperdine to, uh, to defend these towers. Orn ultimate comes down. Ultimately, the CC, I think, keeps Orn from hitting it again. Big set ult into a three-man face breaker. Scott trying to make some distance here, as is Lilia. Scott is still alive, but manages to get the set before he goes down. But with four people alive from University of Victoria, the Nexus goes down, and they win the game. Yeah, I mean, you know, Pepperdine just not seeming quite as comfortable in that game. Trying something a little bit new, a little bit spicy and different with the vein and the TF, but, I mean, that Hecarim just did so much work in the mid game, and not much Pepperdine could do to contest it. They just never had the chance to scale. I mean, the game ending in 26 minutes. Yep. Great job by the University of Victoria today. Definitely adjusting off of that second game where maybe they were a little bit confident um, and coming into the second game with that, you know, sleeper pick and and really being able to capitalize on all of uh, Pepperdine's mistakes. So great job yeah, for absolutely. the University very, of Victoria. Very well played from the University of Victoria, really tightening up and uh, and playing very well in that third game. So, you know, props for props are due. Absolutely. Uh, from the side of Pepperdine, I I'm actually I'm very happy, I think. You know, first game didn't go great, and yet absolutely bouncing back with an amazing game two, really excellent draft. Yes, they lose game three. Yes, they lose the series, but I think there's a ton of, you know, really good takeaways. The VOD review is going to be super awesome. I'm, I'm, I just, I cannot say enough how proud I am of that game two bounce back really, really well fought. Scott played uh, out of his mind. I mean, just an excellent day overall. Yeah, I think I think everybody uh, really had moments to shine on on every team. I know uh, uh, because of a lot of the hijinks in chat, there was a lot of focus on the Hungarian hippo whale. But um, you know, great player. But also, I think you know Clancy on the Leona had a lot of time to shine. A uh, great play from I carry you as well. Uh, Bigoroso had some great moments on the volley bear and on the Hecarim. Uh, as well as, you know, biters at various points in the game, as well as Pepperdine, uh, each player, you know, Scott, Winchell, Santo Massey, uh, Bobby Joe, and Dragon King Hots, and Evan Gakes the first game. Every player had moments to shine. So I think that there's stuff that they can all learn and stuff that they should all be very, very proud of these games. Absolutely. And I think, I think I did not mess up Winchell's name once. You did this not. Entire cast. You did. You Woo! never called him we Evan got there. or uh, Evan Chill, right? You didn't do I, it. I don't think I did. So, all in all, uh, GG, well played, University of Victoria. 
good job, uh, Pepperdine. And, you know, thanks to everybody who stopped by uh, in the chat. Uh, all, all friendly banter here. Yeah, I, uh, I think this is the most fun we've had with chat all season. I mean, really engage chat thank you guys very much glad to go back and forth with you with a little uh you know just some fun banter and and some spicy names for the the mid laner on the side of victoria so yeah happy to be here definitely so uh if uh i'm assuming if you're a university of victoria you probably uh, won't be stopping by again but we would love to have you uh, but if you are here to watch Pepperdine play, we will have another game next week. We think we'll be going back to our reg regularly scheduled noon Saturday games. I don't expect we'll have to reschedule again, but we'll keep you posted if not. And, you know, just to be safe on all of those updates, make sure to give us a follow here on Twitch as well as follow our Instagram and Twitter at Pep Esports. And then, of course, join our Discord server if you're interested in talking to us about the games or whatever. Uh, both, both Cotty and I are there, and we would love to have you. So, all in all, absolutely great games, GG, and have a wonderful rest of your weekends. See all you guys right. Later. Bye, everybody. Let me need to actually end the stream. All right. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>